Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome to Edge of Legend season two, episode four. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get used to saying season two. Uh, that being said, um, let's do a quick look around the room and see who all these amazing people are, and then do a recap and then get right into it. That being said, let's start off with Tobias. Tobias, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Can I just combine the two? Like, <laughs> hi, I'm Tobias. Uh, I am playing uh, Tobias Raphaelis, um, and my pronouns are he, him, his. Love it. Um, next up, Kylie. Please, Kylie, tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hi, I'm Kylie, or I go by Kylie. It really doesn't matter at this point. I'm playing she on Abyss, and we both go by she, her. Awesome. Next up, Sydney. Tell me who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hello. My name is Sydney Rubino. I play Alona, the half of Cloistered Cleric, and my pronouns are she, her. Nice. And next up, Mr. Michael Powell, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hey, everybody. I'm Michael Powell, and I play the fabulous Rufa, and our pronouns are he, him, they, them. Excellent. Sam, who are you playing pronouns, question mark? I thought you just were going to ask, who are you? And I had another existential crisis in that second before you continued. What are you? (laughs) Sam, really, who are you? (laughs) I am Sam. I am a happy salamander. And I'm playing Ichipuk Tempapakui, also known as La Pacifica Dorita. Um, yeah, isn't this thing cute? Oh my god. <laughs> Angry face! Oh it's my god. <laughs> um, and our pronouns are she, her. Nice. Uh, well, my name is PJ uh, McGaw. I am the GM for Edge of Legend and Nat 20 Productions. My pronouns are he, him, and I'll be playing everyone and everything in between. And without further ado, if you haven't seen the recap already on our YouTube, uh, Nat 20 Prods, uh, then let me give you the lowdown so far. Uh, last week, we were kicking things off into full gear with the trial for the immortal soul of Asim Ra. Does he go to Ravon and become the avatar of... Uh, destruction does he go with Ra and become a celestial of the sun itself we don't know uh, after looking over some evidence and having some surprise changes in the uh, I guess you could say the prosecution prosecuting attorney uh, we find ourselves now uh, at a moment where uh, Ra himself has been summoned to the witness stand by al Muhammad, the devil god or lord if you will of contracts, lawyers, and word-based manipulations. This is kind of his thing. And al Muhammad has summoned Ra to the stand to make a, uh, if you will, a sort of character character assassination of sorts. We'll pick up from there just to get a little bit of a refresher. as al Muhammad calls Shionabis to leave the stand, citing no further questions, they then call upon Ra. In a burst of sunfire and holy light, Ra is now sworn in and the witness there in for the trial. al Muhammad comes up and says to Ra, simply puts, Ra, do you recognize this man that I'm pointing out, pointing out in the courtroom, let the record show, I'm pointing to the uh, defendant, to which Ra says, I'm sorry, I don't think I know that man. And that is where we're going to be picking up right back in the courtroom as al Muhammad smiles with a dastardly shit-eating grin, looking at the god of the sun and the supposed champion that worships him. They turn to Anubis and says, Your Honor, I would like to cite for the court that while in this discourse we have been working to validate whether or not there was some sort of contractual ownership over the immortal soul of Asim Ra, counterpoint to this that instead he must go with Ra. However, at this time, I believe the record does show Ra does not grant ownership or recognize the defendant at this time. And as such, I would like to ask that we reconsider the argument about Ravon's placement, my client, and the defendant. Uh, Ra, I believe I have no further questions for you. Would the def- would the defending party like to ask some questions of the God of the Sun? al Mahamia kind of has a, a, a sick swagger as he leaves um, the Sun God on the stand. Now, before we begin, we're going to try to do something a little differently here. 
I want you all to give me an initiative role. This is just a decide turn order for who will be deliberating and asking questions uh, moving forward. Rats. Sixteen. Sixteen for Michael. Okay. And what is, so, the, what is the initiative in Pathfinder? It is perception in this case. Uh, oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, who said seven? I said 17. Sydney said 17. Okay. Yeah. And Kylie, what is your initiative? 29. Damn. Okay. Sam, what is your initiative? 19. 19. And Tobias, what is your initiative? 12. 12. Okay. So going first will be Kylie. You get to ask Ra a question first. Now to make sure that we have enough time, but also everyone gets a piece, I'll be timing you for about five minutes. When you ask your oh. first question, then I will hit the timer. Are you ready, Kylie? Yep. Sorry for the wind in the background. If you can hear it, my nope. garage door is open. Narp. Um, yeah, let's go. Okay. When it was asked, PJ, was it asked for me to leave the defendant stand or to like leave the defendant party as a whole or just the witness stand? Uh, you were just asked to leave the uh, witness stand so that they could get another okay. witness in for questioning. Perfect. Okay. I ask you, Your Honor, this. Is it not right if someone for their whole life sorry it's okay i won't take the full five minutes so it's fine is it not right for someone who has been worshiping someone who they thought they had a binding with for what they thought was going to be eternity thus then be turned around and neglected only to be promised to someone else at a later point. Ooh, okay. Give me a diplomacy check really fast. I'm good at these. Nice. Are you preparing um, the clack, fan? Yes. <laughs> uh, d uh, dirty 20. Okay. Dirty 20, one second. Perfect. So you mentioned this question about, is it right for someone who has received so much faith and dedication to then turn their back so they get to do that? You can't help but notice uh, a bit of I, I, kind of ironic shame on Anubis as he's, he's not looking you in the eye when you ask him that question. And uh, so from there, Ra kind of looks to Anubis and looks to Set uh, and then says, well, um, I guess to answer that question would be to say it, it's hard to reinforce someone when you don't know if they've been praying to you. So then is it his right and she's going to point to Awesome Ra or his for unknowing knowing that he belongs to someone else when all his life he has been praying to a whole deity altogether in a whole different culture, mind you. Ra well, definitely thinks about it and looks up at the man, Asim Ra, and just shakes his head and he says, I'm, I'm very sorry. I wish I could help this man out i i can see the corona of the morning sun in his eyes but maybe he's been praying to aten the sun disc maybe he's been praying to uh harakthi one of the many uh cult offsprings of me and horus i i wish i could say you know there's one thing i've learned in my millennia is that the sun is a crowded place um but if I could just have some sense of understanding or proof, I would be happy to give him everything. I just don't know. That's it for me. I want to sit back down. Okay. 
Okay. Next up on the initiative, we have Sam. Sam, what do you want to ask Ra, the god of the sun? Um, really quick. Is this like a a stage? Is is Ra like behind the area? Oh. I don't know. Like, what does it look? What does it look like? Oh yeah, it's it's absolutely <laughs> except for Anubis, who's got his own throne and his executioner's weapon and the scale behind him. Like, there's a witness stand all just like a like a like a courtroom or a judge judy show it's it's like right there okay um i think ichi would just say so Are you sure we, we can't arm wrestle about this to just straighten this out or uh, trial by <laughs> combat? Give me give me a diplomacy check. <laughs> um, that is one second. That is a 12. <laughs> 12. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Al Muhammad is going to burn one of his objection points. Uh, oh. And he's going to say, Objection, Your Honor. Previous uh, precedent has shown that just by merely touching them, I almost killed them. How am I to engage in an arm wrestling competition? I didn't competition? want to arm wrestle you. Objection. <laughs> he's self centered. Is that an objection? So Anubis, Anubis says, overruled. The prosecuting attorney is su suffering from many personality flaws, but his point is still clear. If he were to engage in arm wrestling or Ra or myself, there's no guarantee for your safety. All right, arm wrestling Anubis after that. a finger, it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> He's missing that anchor do pinky. The girl. Do the yeah. girl. <laughs> So, so Ichi just sighs and looks at him like, all right, well, well, we'll do that later. Well, so here's my question for you. If somebody thinks they're praying to you and everything in their consciousness feels like they're praying to you and you just don't hear it, does that mean they're not praying to you? You can choose which role you want to do for this social encounter. You can just decide if it's uh, uh, diplomacy. You can even try to make a religion check. What do you want to try? Uh, we'll do diplomacy. Okay. So I didn't use my hero point on that objection to tell me it was self-centered, right? No, I, I didn't take that seriously. <laughs> Unless you really wanted to no, create the I, argument. I need it now. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. Just like, uh, objection, I'm going to bring your hero point. Your Honor, I'd like to argue the precedent that he sucks. Yes. <laughs> I, that's a good precedent. Uh, don't, I don't see any problems with that. So that's a 21. That is a success. So as you are kind of provoking the question, is not intent of worship enough to be, regardless of whether or not you hear it, enough to be to be considered and Ra just kind of goes Anubis it should right and Anubis just kind of slowly nods yes it should if someone has intent and prays thusly then it is it is prayer regardless and then Ra just kind of goes if you all vouch for this warrior that he has, without a shadow of a doubt, proof or not, prayed to me in his heart, then he has, and I should have this on my records. Absolutely. It's just like, you know, if I'm in a forest and I chop down a tree and no one's there for, to hear it, I still chopped it down. Yeah. This, this makes me wonder. And you see, you see Ra kind of take off the, the helmet of the eagle 
places it down on the on the bar. Anubis, can I have a sort of side delegation to see if perhaps my records have been tampered with? Everyone give me a diplomacy check. The DC to allow this will be really big. The DC to convince Anubis to have a sidebar to look at this investigation will be a total of 100 after I get everyone's oh. total diplomacy checks. We'll see if this succeeds or not. Holy crap. I hope it does because that was going to be my entire argument. <laughs> 27. 13. Oof. Ooh, coming out strong. What did you say the mod was? What is it? Uh, diplomacy? Diplomacy, yes. Ha! 29! Oof, looking really good so far. What we got, Kylie? Was that 21? Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Okay. Michael Powell, bring it home. What's your diplomacy check? 29. Ooh, Yay! that's got to beat it. Let's see. 29 plus. This was, this was the nat one time for me. This, I had to get it out of the way. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think I was almost too kind, if you will. The DC was 100. You got 118. Uh, Anubis um, snaps his fingers and suddenly the defense table with all of you and the prosecuting a table with al Muhammad encloses in a golden orb. And Anubis appears in both. At the same time, he says, I'm speaking with Ra right now. We are having a, a three-party uh, side discussion to figure out if Ra's uh, uh, records had been tampered with. And if so, if we can prove without a doubt that it has been tampered with, we will have to enter it as evidence that the contract between Asim Ra and Ra has been tampered with. Goichi! Uh, Lona's gonna make a sidebar at Ichi real fast. Be like, hey, you know, I read about this in a book. There was like this really cool, uh, like she 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 was she she was like really kind of like not into being a lawyer. And then and then like the person that she loved like went to law school. And then and then she (laughs) followed him there. And like I read about this in a book, and it was like really cool. And then she learned a lot about law. Is it like being a good lawyer? Yeah, I mean, like it's hard. <laughs> I'm going to give you two a hero point for not only bringing Legally Blonde to this world, but sticking the landing on it. Absolutely. But you have to also look what Reap Psyche in the, said in the chat because he said legally strong. <laughs> <laughs> legally strong. Can we get, can we get Reap Psyche a hero point? Yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely. Reap's like, you get a hero so point. Yeah, maximum three, though. You still get a maximum of three, just like players do. So if you hit your third, just keep being excellent. Um, so now, the initiative will still stand, but whoever gets to discuss with Anubis will be whoever's in the initiative next. The timer went off. That means next up in the initiative is Sydney. So you all get to deliberate together, but the only person who gets to talk to Anubis is the person whose initiative is now. So deliberate amongst yourselves on how you're going to get Anubis or where or what you're going to make him look into to figure out this 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 new issue. Okay. Michael. Um, I, since Sydney started one talking, but can we, the other characters, can we do stuff like recall knowledge checks and stuff like that still? Uh, yes, this is part of the deliberation. Uh, okay. like, I was, like I was saying, you all could deliberate and talk, but the only person who could talk to Anubis is the person okay. whose initiative is right gotcha, now. Gotcha, gotcha. So we're in a, in a football huddle. <laughs> like, um, okay, can I do a religion check to see, like, what, how, how, how would we check the records <laughs> to see if things have been messed with? Yeah, sure thing. That would be, I'm going to say that's going to be a hard check at your level, so I need a DC of 22 religion. Can I aid? Can yes. I aid? Yes, absolutely, since this is your religion, absolutely. I'll say both of you can aid. Cool. Help. Help. Not the worst. You don't Not want my help. help. I don't want your no, Kylie. It's a ten. <laughs> oh no! You know you're saving your good luck for later. When it it's we'll too see. early. <laughs> we'll see. 
Um, I I got a twenty-seven. Okay, awesome. Uh, well, that alone is enough to pass a twenty-two DC. Uh, so you're you're kind of thinking about how in the heck this could be. Um, so if if Ra and many other deities kind of keep track of the people who give them faith and has this connection to them, um, then the best way to look at that would be to kind of see uh, either, either an available timeline of like maybe when or how this prayer stopped, or two, to kind of do kind of like a detect magic of sorts on the document to see if there's been any sort of, you know what I'm talking about? However, this would not be done by mortal minds because they would implode with that much divinity being divined. Right. So why not both? 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 Both is good. Um, both is good. Uh, okay, I relayed this information to the group. So with this knowledge, what do y'all think? What else, what, what, what else should be our argument? If, if we find out that these records have or have not been tampered with, where do we need to go from there? What do you well, think? Well, then there's an entire new crime, I'm sure, in the mm -hmm. divine law. Uh, furthermore, mm -hmm. uh, we have to see if this was, this entire court case was premeditated at that point. Oh. Good point. Uh, Ilona looks at Rufa. Rufa, um... Do you think that um, if the records were tampered with, that is enough to prove that Awesome Raw has been framed? Give me one more. I'm sorry. Give me one more. I, I just realized I have an old sheet open. I was wondering why everything was we looking weird. Oh, no. I mean, you had like lower skills than normal because your skills are on a different level because they're just. <laughs> it was my level two sheet. Skills. It was level, my level two, two sheet. I, I keep all my sheet. I keep all my sheets. <laughs> well, that's that's actually good. I definitely don't. I, um, no. but uh, no, nope. yeah, it's also paper. Um, but um, Rufa just kind of kind of strokes his chin. Uh, I was wondering, PJ, could I? roll a recall knowledge legal lore on this uh specifically on the question that sydney asked yeah yes absolutely plus one second math plus 12, always pause plus for math one, yep 29 <laughs> math bad yeah. Uh, so you you know you're so you're thinking about it. And you're like, well, if this court has any like borrowing uh, from mortal courts or even kind of what they told you earlier, if you can prove within a reasonable doubt that Ra's, for lack of a better word, um, faith dictionary or catalog has been tampered with by an outside source, it would at least do one of two things: one, cause some scrutiny about the issue and two if you can actually figure out who is the reason for the scrutiny that'll definitely be a heavy weighing evidence piece in this debate in this liberation sorry okay rufus gonna be kind of you know kind of stroking his chin goes well if uh, as they say as unto as unto the above as below if the their court system are much like the our court system yes yeah, sir Probably, especially if we could find out a reason why they would do such a thing, and especially who, the who and the why right now would perhaps be our best bet. Uh, hmm. I do have a, if only we could talk with our, uh, our awesome Ra, get his side of everything. This would be very much helpful. You mean you want to talk to him directly to ask about his prayers and when he started praying and things yes, like that? Yes, 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 yes. There's no reason we can't call Awesome Ra up as a witness. True, yeah, we but, can totally do that. True, but it would always be more precedent to uh, talk to him in private first, if possible. Oh, 
before yeah. putting him up on the uh I, I, as a player i'm blanking the name of the thing the that were, yeah we put the, stand, yeah, the witness yeah. stand yeah get the witness stand yeah yeah uh we can't do that i wish we could i mean can we no we we were told last episode that we couldn't talk to awesome raw right mm, true uh you were he was being contained um yeah you couldn't like talk to him <laughs> in his containment but if mm-hmm. he is a witness in his own trial it's not impossible to call him to the witness stand okay so after okay so after anubis and Ra look at the records whether or not they discover that things have been tampered with blah 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 after Ra is done and we're done questioning Ra, we'll call awesome Ra to the stand does that sound like a good idea to everybody we see, yeah. I just want to make sure we cannot call Awesome Raw, talk to Awesome Raw privately first before putting him on the stand, right? No, that would also okay. be unethical to the to the dispersion of evidence. Mm. Both people would have to be able to talk to them, and that means Amohamia would have to get him alone for a bit. Mm. Which, yeah, we don't want this, this does leave us open uh, if they do not call him to the stand as a witness uh, themselves, then we are opening ourselves up to have him questioned. I believe while we can potentially pull confirmations of their prayer uh, from the witness stand. I worry what they would intend to pull as the prosecution. Hmm. And also, as a reminder, uh, Anubis does want to have some some direction as to what you want to do to solve the mystery as to what happened to Awesome Ra's file. So if you have uh, something to tell him, uh, who can do it, what, things like that, just suggestions, uh, also be aware you can present that to Anubis. So you're telling us that we have to come up with who is going to look at the records? Yes, as uh, the mortal soul and mind would implode with that kind of divine knowledge. Right, so we can't because we would die. Why can't they? Yeah, it seems like a whole lot of not our job. Why can't yeah. Ra or Anubis? Yeah, it seems like Anubis or Ra would be the ones to look at the records themselves, especially because this is Anubis's court. Okay. Unless, um, I mean, unless Anubis needs to not, is that is there a law that Anubis can't or um, or an assistant of Ra can't do oh, that? Oh, oh, oh. W- what about, didn't we have like a legal aid like helping us? Could we have them do it? Yeah, I, yeah. Would, would it implode their minds? No. If you want to request that a neutral party celestial would look into this on behalf of the court, you can do that. Uh, that seems like it makes sense because otherwise, you know, then Alhama could be like, yeah, well, they're too close to the case. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Sure. And, I, and have... I would totally give you that. Yeah. Okay. Let's have, yeah, let's have the celestial um, neutral party look into it. So our minds don't melt and yeah. um, we can remain neutral. Sure. That sounds okay. like a good idea. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to make a quick ask or reference to Anubis for? You have five minutes. Me personally, or is this um oh me? Okay, we're done talking. Okay. Unless um, unless you have more deliberation, I can pause the clock. Not a big deal. I think we're good. Okay. Yeah. Um <clears throat> Anubis, we would like to um appoint a neutral party in your court system um i.e the celestial that is helping you right now to look through the files as we of course cannot and it would be um conflict of interest if we did um to take a look at um awesome raw's file hopefully that does exist in raw's records to figure out if anything has been tampered with and whatnot all right. Anubis nods uh, and you see his head turn as he seems to be talking to uh, the al uh orb and the Ra orb as well. And he kind of takes a minute, absorbs all the confirmation, and he says, al agrees to having a neutral party celestial look into the files of Ra uh, and to bring it presently here once it is found to be observed by the court. Ra uh, has no problems letting any of their files uh, be looked about, so of course they they ask they're they're okay with this. Uh, as for there seems to be a disagreement. Al Muhammad does not want them to be looked at privately, even by a neutral party. 
he asks that they be looked at in court directly. Okay. Sure. All right. So with that, the golden orbs <clears throat> fade. And in the courtroom, this blinding light forms and you see uh, a celestial of Isis. She looks like a gorgeous woman, like moving like the Nile itself, like, like running water. And she has these giant gold uh, orbs in her hands and she places them down in the courtroom. N no, Sorry. not like that. I, it's okay. Uh, go ahead. Huge tracks of land. <laughs> giant <laughs> tracks of land. Yes. It's like, it's like that old like boomerism where it's like, man, she's got some really big hands, sons. am I right? Yeah, sons, great big sons. Miles. We're all adults here. Anyway. Uh, you got that big evidence. Let's get that big. <laughs> she's got that dummy thick disposition, am I right? Deposition, deposition, am I right? Oh, my. <laughs> I want to apologize to literally everyone. Literally everyone. Uh, anyway. No this is why they watch us. This is why they watch. That's right. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, so anyway. You, oh, thank you. Uh, so the Celestial uh, drops off this information. Uh, and then leaves, and al Muhammad is kind of sitting with like a notebook and a pencil, is kind of tapping it, sees it, smiles. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you uh, to the defense. I hope that we can solve this question. Now, who would like to look at the evidence in the courtroom? What, is, what do you mean? Well, we, you... You agreed for my request that they would not be read prior to coming to this facility, which means they are here now. Now we need to go over the evidence together in the courtroom. Who would like to start off reading? Would the defense like to start? Um, the 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 person, the 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 person that the celestial appointed. Yeah, yeah that one. We'd like to have the celestial. Okay, Anubis, could we have that neutral party celestial come back, please? Anubis looks around. That's what that's what the defense wants as well. We can't read it. We'll die. Okay. And the celestial comes back. Kind of puts on the stenographer's glasses. <clears throat> uh, all right. Um, I would like to begin reading the files. Is there anything you'd like me specifically to reflect or look for? look and see if anything has been tampered with all right all right jumping initiative next person to head the conversation will be michael uh as the celestial vices begins to read um she looks for one awesome raw in the title gets the other one Looking through the file, we don't see any presence of the name Asim, Asim Ra, any variation thereof pertaining to this individual's soul. Um, is there any other questions or things you'd like me to look for? Uh, Michael, you are now leading the initiative charge. What do you want to ask the Celestial to look for? Hmm. First, I was wondering if I could roll a purse. This is like launch a perception check to... Um... God, I'm blanking. I'm blanking on names tonight. Um, the Ravon's defense. Oh, um, Amuhamia. Amuhamia, yeah. Um, just kind of gauge their reaction to okay. all this. Uh, give me a perception check. You are trying to perceive the secret intents of a devil lord, so this will be an incredibly hard DC at your level. You have to beat a 30. Uh. Uh, I don't think I can. Wait, wait. Let's... Oh my god, I got a 30. <laughs> really? I got an 18 and plus 11 and plus my plus one. Oh, For the case! <gasps> For the case! Yeah. Yes! It would have been a 29 yes! without it. <laughs> <laughs> the plus one coming in clutch. That's why I always ask. Yeah. So you see al Muhammad is like Looking like this, elbows on table, hands tea, uh, kind of teeple around his mouth like this. Just like. And as you're looking at his face, you realize there's a really weird kind of flexation and kind of spazzing going on in his cheek. He's smiling. He's 
kind of trying to hide a smile about what's happening. Okay, uh, Rufus gonna quickly kind of you know how when you put like a book or something up in front of your face so the other person can't see, but your your people can see kind of like that. Yeah. Ba- basically, Rufus gonna do that with. I'm guessing there's a book or a notepad or something somewhere he could do that with. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be like he mouths. He gonna looks at the rest of the group. Goes. He mouths the word. He's up to something. He's up to something. Rufa can see. Rufa sees all. Oh, oh, Alona mouths back. <laughs> what? I keep forgetting is that you just said the person. <laughs> 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 It's okay. It's okay. Repeat it for me. Ready? Repeat it for me. Anyway, I'm, I'm typing. Wait, one second. I'm typing it out. Okay. 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 You ready? Yeah. All right. Name. Al. Al. Moo. Moo. Ham. Ham. Ia. All my hams. Amu ham. The new Amu, daytime. Amu ham. Yeah. So, okay. Amu ham. <laughs> Amu ham. Yeah. He's. He knew this beforehand. He knew all this information beforehand. What? I'm just kidding. Sorry. Okay. Wait. Wait. What? Um. What? Uh, Out of character. What, what did she mouth? She said, "Thank you." Thank you. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Can I now actually like this is all gonna? I'm, I'm gonna say. Can we say this all ha- happens within the spans of kind of a few seconds? Um, I'm gonna say it's happening in real time. Okay. You are you are having a conversation after okay. all. Yeah. Because uh, I want you want to roll uh, another recall knowledge legal lore, mm-hmm. uh, just to know if uh, if. Mm, mm. I don't, I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out how to best put this. Um, if somehow the the other attorney gets information before us um you would i'd give you with all the rules you have and probably your static bonus you know that um you both are supposed to receive the same evidence and the same information before time in fact not sharing information or not giving the same information can be a massive uh uh uh, legal issue in a court of law um so there's no way that any evidence presented in court was presented without this person's knowledge that is assuming it is official evidence at the start of the deliberation. This is new evidence that's currently being going overboard or over with. So it's really not the same. Not in like not in the real in the real court of law, this is not entirely accurate. Mm-hmm. This is this is some 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 interesting in, interpretation. Okay. But let's just say no. Okay. Uh Rufus gonna look up over at Nubus goes, Donna, I'd sidebot, if you please. Sorry, uh, didn't you hear you. Who are you sidebarring with? Uh, Anubis. Oh, Anubis just looks at you. Uh, just had us. Okay, wh- what is the nature of this sidebar? Okay, this is once again, this is Michael is not a lawyer. He does not know the exact <laughs> term for this, but what's the exact term of this? Lawyering? Sorry, don't worry about the don't worry about the lawyer terms. Worry about what you're trying to achieve. What do you want to what do you want to do? Uh, Rufa would like to. Rufa believes that the our, uh, op- opposing party knew about all this information beforehand that uh, they did not share with the uh, the rest of the class. Objection, Your Honor. This is hearsay and, quite frankly, offensive and irrelevant to this conversation. If this is objection anything that... Objection to his objection! I use my point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mahami, it looks at you. <laughs> and he takes off his glasses and he goes, Excuse me? Your Honor, uh, what what are you objecting and or or sustaining to, um, sustaining to? And so Anubis just goes, "Oh my god!" I will join him. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks at you. He's like, "Do you do you see what it's like to be a god? It's it's very challenging." That's uh, why I. That's why I don't do it. Ugh. Well, maybe one day. No, <laughs> but, right. no, I, I'm nope. Mm. Quick, somebody clip Sydney's eye roll. <laughs> 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 it was perfect. So Anubis, uh, Anubis kind of says, "All right, we're going. We're just going to 
overrule all the objections as well as what was asked. Bottom line is this. This is brand new evidence. The court wishes for you to treat this as new evidence removed of both parties. If there is some sort of underhanded tactic going on here, then it is upon each of you to prove that this is an underhanded tactic. Until then, please just work with the evidence provided. With that, uh, Rufus Gunn just kind of looks over at Amu ha- Amu Hamia. Yeah, and just kind of kind of kind of narrows his eyes a little bit. And hmm. I I have a trump card, but I don't want to use it so early. I got <laughs> one trump card I can use. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, and I'm gonna happen. I'm gonna change the initiative over to Tobias at this point. You guys can all deliberate your next action. I'll be right back. All right. Quick, what at, did I miss? At this point in time, we have to figure out. Well, of course, our individuals aren't seeing tampering. That's why it's called tampering. Um, So with that in mind, perhaps there's a common method of tampering any of you might be familiar with as far as gods go. Uh, But Mm -hmm. I do not know off the top of my head. I mean, when... Whenever the disembodied person that makes decisions comes oh, yes. back. I, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can um look through my mind palace, as Rufa likes to call it. Your, um and find what? out mind palace. Your what? Mind palace. It's her brain. I, yeah. You, except... No, I got that far technically. Okay, because sometimes I'm not sure if you're all there. I, I, I oh trust me, I sometimes am not. <laughs> Except mine is more like a library, like it's really big and and va- I'll look through my records and see what I can find about. Oh, um... It's about size, but that's fine. Uh... That a lot of opinions just happened in a very <laughs> short span of time. Uh, Luna does not understand what that joke means at all. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah, we should. We have to prove somehow that there's tampering. I have no idea how to do that. Um, it, but also... it seems irrelevant for us to have to prove that there was tampering to this new evidence, as it is not equal to us as the ability to check for tampering. The defense is unable to do so. So, what um, do you suggest? Abu Hamia definitely did. He knew about all this. It's it's quite suspicious that he asked for it to an open court in front of everybody. Hmm. I think he wanted to prove a point and humiliate us is what he wanted to do. Um, I don't necessarily think it's humiliation. It's simply an effective tactic. Uh, even if he did know about it, we do not have any form of proof we can offer that he did. Ergo, it does not matter. Uh, hey, I want to make a religion check um, on... Uh, ways things of this nature like these uh, divine documentations if they've been tampered with in the past and how because clearly they don't know what to look for because it's tampered with and if you're good at tampering with something it's not going to look like it's there Um, so perhaps I know they just looked for a name Uh, I don't know if there's a common methodology but if there's something beyond the name as well uh, that would be uh, valid as cataloging. Um, I would like to know about it. All right, give me a religion check. I certainly will. All right, baby. <laughs> no, that's another nat one. Uh, so a <laughs> nine total. Nine total. Okay. Uh, one second. We're gonna fix the cameras really quick. Um, so, oh, wait, never mind. We're back. Okay. Uh, so nine total for a nat one. So. Oh yeah, but uh, as you as you say that the My second the, one, <laughs> the celestial of Isis just kind of like adjusts her glasses and goes, "I, I don't, I don't know." 
I, like I said, I, I tried and I couldn't find anything. And if it's been tampered, I don't know what to look for in the tampering. And uh, Raw just goes, okay, move, 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 move. Let me, hold on. Let me, D- Anubis, may I, may I please look at the evidence? And of course, Amahamia raises a hand and goes, objection, bias. And Anubis just goes, <sighs> he's right, sustained. Uh, so is there any other questions or anything else you wish to look for in the evidence? Unfortunately, at this time, uh, the defense is unable to, within their capacities, observe this evidence that has been brought to the court as we have only been able to work through a neutral party who is not specialized in this kind of documentation, which the persecution is clearly. Uh, and while this is perhaps uh, an opportunity that we could have had to prove Awesome Ra's uh, faithfulness. Uh, unfortunately, at this time, due to our lack of capacities as mortals, uh, have to yield, uh, it seems, uh, to what has been given. Thank you very much, Defense Prosecution. Do you have anything to add, subtract, blah, blah, blah? The Omohamia kind of goes, Prosecution's feeling sassy, Your Honor. I'd like to keep that uh, as evidence for later. And and you just see Anubis go, oh, all right, fine, please no, give me that. And with a wave uh, of his hand, it is placed into evidence for later consideration. I, I can't, unfortunately, object to sassiness as someone who utilizes it himself in the defense. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> Unfortunately and begrudgingly nod to the demon. The 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 devil looks to you and does a little gesture to be like, you know, same in kind. So with that, uh the prosecution uh stands up. <clears throat> Your Honor, we have attempted in many points in time, tried to Proceed with character assassination to my client, one Ravan of the Nine Hells. I understand that this is a very heavy and leading title. And I understand that this court is trying to figure out where the soul is supposed to go, though I would like to admit that this is starting to feel a bit pointed, and that if this is entirely just a character assassination against the intent of my client, and of course the defendant, then I'd like to rule for a mistrial. This is clearly uh, not a good use of this court's time. He's going to make a diplomacy check unless someone would like to object. Um, I don't even know what to say to that. Um, objection! Uh, what do I say to that? <laughs> uh, so I would like to just ask you a straight up question, PJ. Mm-hmm. A mistrial just invalidates the entire case. Uh, yes. What, it, what does that imply for the outcome? In this case, if there is a mistrial and the entire thing is thrown out, then Austin Ra would be forced to live as is, suffering his conflict of possession, potentially succumbing to Ravan's uh, influence and becoming the avatar of Ravan. Crap. Objection! <laughs> yeah. Religion do, check! Do, do. <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> go for it religion check um, religion check what are you looking for if there have been any other trials in the history of god court okay go ahead that this is kind of like <laughs> according to jesus versus <laughs> damn it I want to cite the precedent of uh, the Lamb of God versus Satan. Reap Psyche! Give me your arrow point! <laughs> Please! Into the night. I mean, Reap does have a really good point. Please! What did he say? Uh, Reap Psyche is saying Ra was neutral and the issue was called by the prosecution. How is he biased? If anything, he's the biggest expert here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he gave me his hero point. He gave okay. it to me. All right, zero point. Go ahead and roll it. I will. That was a one. 
Yeah, claiming bias on a god seems pretty bad. Well, Mahoney oh. is a god of sorts, so. Reef Psyche, your hero point saved everybody. I don't know how, but it did. I rolled a 19. Um, wow. Uh, 19 with my religion bonus that I need to do math. Huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 33. 30. God bless. That's awesome. Okay. Okay. So, Help. Uh, you. So, some of this I don't think Alona would know yet because it is absolutely, and I'm, oh, I always butcher this word, apocryphal? Apocryphal? So, you don't know all this stuff yet, but you do know that around the time of the fall of the devils during the seven glories, Iudex, being the judge that he is, did hold court over, as it says in the book, over gods and fallen gods alike. Not really full detail, but you do know it's very common for gods to actually hold court over other gods. Objection! This shit happens all the time! Ask that guy! Points to Justicar Ford. <laughs> Justicar Ford's in the back reading a book. Oh, yes. Um, uh, expert witness on Iodex. We do lots of God judging. It's, uh, it's, in, the, it's in the book. Anubis looks at that, looks at Justicar Ford, acknowledges that he is an expert for many reasons. Sustained. The courts will continue in earnest to press on. We will not call this a mistrial. We will not call this an assassination character. Mohamia, I will strike from you the, your ability to continue that argument. It has become apparent to me that the fact of the matter is, being that you represent and are a devil, has to be weighed here. I'm sorry, but that's the stakes that we're at. So, as it is... I'm going to look position, at Mohamia and just give him a... Little. Oh, Muhammad just looks at you. He's like, shakes a fist. Blum little, blum little kiss. <laughs> that wait for later. <laughs> I'm gonna consider that. Uh, okay, so with that round of deliberations, you are you are currently winning. Al Muhammad is trying to throw up a good fight, but it's looking pretty good in your favor now. So Al Muhammad turns and goes. Fine then, Your Honor, I would like to posit a new question. For this court and this trial to therefore be moving forward, since the fact that Ravan is a devil must be weighed in accordance, and the fact that Ra, of course, is a divine celestial, then to that, if we cannot prove within a reasonable doubt that Asim Ra either goes to Ravan or goes to Ra, then we have to now prove within a reasonable doubt where his soul is actually belonging to. And since he has died at least on one occasion, which we have noted by the memory evidence, I would like to say that if we cannot prove within a shadow of a doubt, within reasonable doubt, that his soul goes anywhere at all, that he returns to the realm of the dead instead. I believe Duat would be very honored to have his presence. Anubis just kind of humbly nods. Great. Then that being said, the prosecution went to call to the stand Asimra for cross-examination. Oh, yeah, we saw this coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he calls up Asimra and looks him in the eye and goes, Asimra, why did you come back? Because I didn't want to be in hell. Who does? I live there. I have this great estate. It sucks. So, you climbed through many levels of hell. Yeah. And so you you willfully believe that there is worse things than being in hell. Of course. Mm-hmm. So, if there are worse things than being in hell, then why is it... That moving forward, you know, let me rephrase the question. Would you rather be in the land of the dead or would you rather be in the land of the the demons and devils? Objection, irrelevant leading question. Sustained. Omohamia, you are absolutely leading the witness. Where is this going? 
Asimra. If you are to be given your life, what would you do with it? As an elf, I have a timeline that knows no end until I'm killed. I would fight. I would defend my country, my, my people, the humans that look up to us. And if presented, I would love the woman of my dreams until that infinity ends. Mm. Love. A passionate plea. Anubis, your mother birthed you against your father's set. Is that not correct? She cheated on your dad with someone else? Anubis looks very concerned. What are you getting at? Love is a fickle thing, is it not? In some cases, it can lead a hero to great acts. In some cases, it causes gods to create great, great acts of disloyalty. If the argument being presented that this man's love is worthy of defeating death and the hells, then it must be scrutinized as a blinding factor because love itself is easily overtaken by lust and lust can succumb to betrayal very quickly. And he turns and looks at Set in the back and he goes, isn't that right, Set boy? And you Injection. just see Set just like... Tobias like a, will just start laughing. Like just about to go off. <laughs> yes. Uh, is is uh, Shonibus uh, objecting? Yes. What do you say? We are completely off topic. I believe this is a trial about someone's soul and where it's to be had, not about someone's love life in itself. Valid argument. Would you not say that love comes from the soul? If it's not faith that soul gives passion to a god, it is something I've about that. I've made a lot of love without my faith involved. Surely, though, but someone had faith involved when you made love, Paladin. <laughs> Objection, <laughs> Your Honor. How do we even know that this guy knows what he's talking about? He's a demon. <laughs> not, that, mean... not an expert in love. <laughs> yeah, we've seen. We know. Tobias <laughs> have a lot of entanglements. I don't, we don't know this guy. He sounds salty. Who hurt you? Are you Who calling him for your diplomacy check? Hurt you. <laughs> Alan Muhammad is a I N C E L, is what we're <laughs> saying. Basically, is that's that a net 20? Oh my god, it's a net yeah. 20. Fucking this is all shit. I want. <laughs> Who hurt you? All right, so you say that, and Anubis, who's like toes are curling in rage, just goes, sustained prosecution? I understand the argument you're trying to make. You are on thin ice. Change your topic now. Yeah. I also want to do a perception check. Does he look like he's thinking about who hurt him? (laughs) Yes, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Okay. But like it's a twenty-four. Also, what? <laughs> twenty-four. You see, first of all, Alahami is smiling because he realized he just pissed off like three major deities in the same room and got off on a technicality. So he's just like, mm-hmm. and then you see him going, "Oh God!" But there it was that one day, I put all my faith in Magadon. I believed he was the one true ruler of the seven glories, or at least one who could be manipulated. And then that bastard betrayed him. We, should we call all him. fell with them. Hmm? What? But cut, call who? Who do I? Who would I call? I don't know. I have people to call. People. I'm fine. I, I believe you, the therapists, <laughs> demon therapists. I have a door for that. You have a door for that. <laughs> you can you can use it technically. It's a thing. So no, Al Muhammad Al Muhammad stops and goes. All right. All right. All right. All right. Though my words may have been insulting, I would like to at least allow or ask the court to allow the argument to be kept on the record and that I will admit to grand overstepping. Anubis goes, in the argument of love being blinding, I will allow this. 
but your heresy will not be kept in the record. Oh, oh me, oh my, a devil? Heresy? Bad devil. I don't care. So with that, al Muhammad looks back to Asamra and goes, all right. <clears throat> Asimra. Last question, and this is a hypothetical, admittedly. Let's say we move forward with this whole trial, and you're allowed to live, but Ra still doesn't recognize you. What would you do moving forward if Ra refuses to recognize you, you, a paladin of his name? Are you going to continue to fight in the name of a god who does not understand or witness you? Or are you going to turn your back on that oath? Asim Ra kind of looks in quiet for a bit, and he, then he looks at Ra, he looks at Shionibis. I believe in Ra not because he believes in me. I believe in Ra because I look at the sun, and I see the beautiful things that stand underneath it. I see the shadows they cast, and I see Anubis, and I see the golden skin of such beautiful princesses. And I know that it doesn't matter what's in that sun. I just know that it exists. You really want to try me, devil man? I've been killing your kind for a thousand years. Say less. Oh! And al Muhammad just kind of smiles. No further questions, your honor, defense, all yours. Honestly, uh, the question I needed was just answered, so. If anyone would like to ask questions, top of the next initiative is Kylie. Kylie, would you like to ask questions of Awesome Ra? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, I guess I'll ask a question to Anubis first. Mm -hmm. um, your honor, you godly being. Um, is this not a trial of possession truly at the heart of it then why why is it that well let me rephrase this we know that it is between Ra and Ravon yet Ra has appeared yet Ravon hasn't instead he has sent one of his devils instead in his place thus possibly proving that he is in fact already possessing Asima. So, where would we be? Because now, almost without a shadow of a doubt, we know that possession has in fact occurred. Thus him not rightfully owning his own soul. Thus still being part of Ra. Possession is nine tenths of the law. Give me a diplomacy check, and I'll give you a plus one. <gasps> <clears throat> it's because we homies. Can I assist <laughs> by? Can I assist by yelling? Yeah, have you seen them in the same room at the same time? <laughs> I have it. Please. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you do. In fact, if anyone wants to roll to assist this check, please go ahead and tell me how you're going to shout to assist, and obviously make that diplomacy oh, check. God. A natural friggin'. <laughs> why, okay. did, why did you take all of my 20s and I took all of your ones? I I don't know. Yo, I'm loving Wait. HE round three is coming out the gates going like finders keepers. What? She was like, oh, you they're letting me shit talk in court. Oh, I get it now. Oh yeah. And she like <laughs> takes off jacket. HE <laughs> puts on power power blazer. <laughs> <laughs> Adjust the pantsuit. Yeah. Uh, so Michael, uh, that's a twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Okay, plus two from not each. including. Oh, so twenty. That's a, then twenty-nine. Okay. Uh, just before we move, on, I want to make sure. Does anyone else want to roll to assist this roll? Yes, Michael. Yeah, uh, I rolled. Um, I didn't get a. I didn't get a twenty. Mm -hmm. but I got a pretty decent roll. I got a twenty-seven. That's still really good. Okay. Okay. Uh, are, do, do you want to role play like shout anything or just like uh, no, I'm good. I, like I'm yeah. Thinking, I'm thinking Rufa is going to. 
you know what? Let's have a little fun with this. As soon as uh, Itchy does that, uh, you know, says says all that, Rufus just goes, is like standing right behind her, goes and just goes, yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. The uh, hype. All right, Sydney. What was your roll? Um, I got a twenty-two. Okay. All right. Uh, do you want to do you want to say anything or just kind of again join the hype train? Yeah, I'm gonna follow after Rufa. I watch him go. Yeah, and then Alone is gonna go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tobias, would you like Jared to? Uh, Tobias <laughs> is only observing at this point. Like his arms are crossed, brows kind of furrowed, just watching. Okay. Now you make me feel like you're disappointed in me. Wow. Okay, it's fine. I'm going to observe the defense. Well, sorry, the prosecution. All right. So, as you make a very good point to Anubis, you rolled a twenty-seven, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. So you rolled a twenty-seven. First of all, stellar roll. Anubis considers this for a bit. You can hear Al Muhammad trembling to get an objection out, but he is having a hard time finding a counter argument or a reason to object. And this is why I'm watching. <laughs> and you can just see, you can see Al Muhammad starting to sweat, and he's like, relevant. He's going to look it's over a- and wink. And you go, mm, he looks at you, and, he's, and, you, and you can see his like grossly alabaster skin starting to get really blood red as he is really mad at you at this. Anubis looks at al Muhammad in distress, thinks about your words and goes, the court agrees in this case with Shionibis's logic. At this point in time, since Ravan is not present for the hearing, he forfeits any right to say. Even with representation, as this point in time, Ra has been called in, Set has been called in. Unless anyone has any questions to ask for Ravan in this case, but I believe the evidence does strongly suggest his position on this case already. Does anyone have any questions for Ravan personally? The answer's no, right? Chirps. Dead quiet chirps. You see, Amihami is like he's writing and he's thinking to himself, like he definitely wants to call Ravon in, but you can tell something's stopping him. Give me a perception check, everyone. Yes, it's because he's already in the room. The killer's in the building. The killer's in the building. Oh, uh, fifteen. Good. But I have been staring at this motherfucker. <laughs> you have been. I'll give you a plus two, making it a seventeen. Sure. Uh, dirty 20. Dirty 20? That was a 14. 14, 17. 17. Michael, what was your perception? 28. 28. Yes. You definitely see it. You see Al Muhammad. He's writing, he's taking notes. He's got his hand raised like he's about to object, but he's just trying to find something to go off that objection with. And then you, Michael, Rufa, hear him go, no, no, no. If I call him in, I'll disrupt the whole plan. I need I need to just let this go. <clears throat> and then you see him looking angry as he throws his pencil in his notebook and just is quiet. The prosecution would not like to press their client at this time. Rufus going to, at this point, kind of looks at the rest of the party and goes, this... Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no. This whole thing has been a distraction. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Uh, uh, does this mean that we need to call Ravon? My, uh, well, uh, there's two things we can do. Uh, <clears throat> one, call, call in Ravon, because that's just hilarious at this point. Um, but the other thing that is a potential is if uh, Awesome Ra is in fact possessed, would that be something that would tamper with those records as to if they are living documents? Mm, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Um, uh, uh, huh. Can we have hold please how long is this how out of character how long is this thing how long is this court case taking in real life 
In real life, it's kind of impossible to say. Uh, when you were in your rooms, your private chambers, the antechamber, uh, they said time does not work the same way here. This could be seconds, this could be hours, this could be days, it could be minutes. Oh man, we're getting back in the year like 1999. It's gonna be <laughs> Y2K by the time we get out of this. It's gonna be um, Starfinder. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> concern is um can alona like whisper to a sentinel or somebody nearby to be like can you check on the red wastes for me please right now in this moment can you check on the how are the red wastes doing right now you made a diplomacy check okay can, can i can, uh, can i, I aid you know, both of you can both of you absolutely can uh, aid. yes i'm the fucking yeah. princess yeah that's what's up Twenty-one. Nineteen for Nade. Twenty-one. Nineteen. Okay. One second. I'm adding. Twenty-nine. Okay. So uh, that's going to be a total a bonus of plus three. Sydney, what was your original roll? Total, uh, I should say. Uh, my initial roll was twenty-one. Okay. So the twenty-four. Um, you all present. We need to check on the red wastes. You see Set stand up and go, what about them? And Anubis looks at Set. Yes, Sentinel, please. Uh, one of my acolytes, please go check on the red wastes and report immediately if you can. We're going to send someone to look into this. Until such time, I recommend we wrap up this court case immediately with a decision so that we can see that everything is going to be okay. Now, as Shonibus said, there's a strong possibility that, Reva that Asim Ra's soul still belongs to Asim Ra, regardless of the information given. With the fact that there is no information given, but she made a very good point, now we need to deliberate one final question. Where does the soul ownership of Asim Ra go to? Does it go to Ra? Does it go to Ravan? Does it go to Duat? Does it go to this mortal plane? That is my last question. And if we can prove this within a reasonable doubt, this will be my final verdict. Now, next on the initiative for the defense, unless there's no further questions for Austin Raw. Any other questions for Austin Raw? Actually, uh, I, I think I should do. Sure, sure. Really fast. Just keep your hand raised for now. Anyone else? <clears throat> I'll go after Rufa. Okay, okay. Uh, so then, by that admission, we'll go to Michael in the initiative. Michael, you get to ask Awesome Raw questions. Uh, we will have the timer go five minutes after the question is posited. It's basically like a short little kind of closing statement, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. uh, Rufus is going to just kind of stand up there. He's going to take off his glasses, kind of from his pocket, takes out a little, you know, thing, just kind of clings them, goes, we have been talking a lot about possession and... Uh, who goes what and who goes where, but the thing, the thing about the mortal kind is that's slightly different than gods and devils and demons and such is free will. Yes. One of the things we have not asked really was what does Awesome Law want? Does Awesome Law want to go to Ravan? Does Awesome Law want to go to Ra? Does Awesome Ra just want to be with Chonobus? That is the thing we have. That's the special thing that mortal kind has, the freedom of choice. So I ask Awesome Ra this. Arufa asks Awesome Ra this. Awesome Ra, what do you want? Where do you want to go? It's your life. It's your life, man. Live it. <laughs> Really fast, give me your choice, performance check or diplomacy check. Because you're definitely you're definitely vibing in that space. So I'll let either one be uh, applicable. Uh, let me see which one's hot. They're, they're the same. So you know what? I'm going to go with, heck, let's go with performance. I haven't done a performance role in like forever. <laughs> yeah. Can I assist by nodding like at the most opportune moments and being like, hmm, and then like taking notes when he says certain phrases? I think the best way to assist is doing the snap thing. <laughs> give me, give me uh, for you, for you, Ichi, to uh, to assist. Either give me a um, 
performance check or deception check as you're basically going like, yeah. <clears throat> performance. She has a clipboard. So like, you know, anytime there's a clipboard, it's serious business. So she's like listening to the roof. I'd be like, mm-hmm. And then writing on the clipboard. It's all about the clipboard. Let me tell you guys. Subtle mm-hmm. actions. Yeah. Not very much, but <laughs> it's a uh, 16. Okay. Okay. Michael, what was your role? 31. <gasps> Woo! 31. I'm okay. Good at two things really performance and diplomacy. That's the two <laughs> things I'm actually really, really good at. You mean you sure it wasn't me with the clipboard? <laughs> that did it. <laughs> and the clipboard, the clipboard, the, bl- the blessed <laughs> clipboard of Itchy the Saint. More like the clutch board, am I right? Coming in clutch with that clipboard. Uh, so you say this, and Asimra looks like he wants to answer, and then Anubis kind of puts a hand up and he says, Unfortunately, the desires of Asimra is irrelevant to the case at hand. However, if they can be posited as evidence for deliberation, and then he looks at Amuhamia with like this heavy go off yourself look, then we will happily take it into consideration. Asimra, what do you want to do with your life? I mean, I want to keep praising the person who gave me a son and and the power that comes from that. But I only cherish that power because it lets me protect and be with you. And he points to Shionibus. And then he looks at her and he says, you, you're my... I want to protect my f- fiance. We'll get to that. We'll talk about it later. Oh, it was, oh, I mean, I don't know if there will be a later. Do you even have the ring I gave you? It's, it's somewhere. It's somewhere. Uh, probably, probably at the palace. Probably at the palace. Right. The, the <laughs> symbol of my quite literal eternal love for you is at the palace that's what look good she's got to get her hands dirty right now okay we're kind of, yeah we're kind of in the middle of something like saving your life just stick with raw for now i think raw's good raw was a good stick argument with Ra? okay yeah, damn, Ra was good. uh well in, in light of some news uh i thought i was engaged Th- that may be under <laughs> speculation um but I would, um, I would like the opportunity to confirm that with my potential fiance, as as well as continue to praise the sun that gives all life. To that, Anubis just goes first. First of all, Anubis looks at you like, like he looks at Shionibus going, "You don't have the ring anymore. What did you pawn it? Why would you?" It? You seem I, check, I check Anubis's pinky for a ring real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you seem you seem to really love throwing away icons of faith, don't you? Really? We're gonna talk about this now? I know I've made mistakes. Um, I'm, uh, I'm just saying this um, this is now a precedent. I, I don't know. I, I I can't object uh to your honor, but I feel as though uh this is very irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, when did I get on trial? And well, when, when you didn't bring anything. <laughs> it's like a ring. And with that, um, uh, Amuhamia starts to grow a smile that he does not hide, and he stands up. And that's the timer for that wonderful scene to be done. He stands up, and he looks to uh, uh, Anubis, and he says, your Honor, if there's no further questions from the defense, the prosecution would like to ask the witness to stand down. And Anubis just looks back at the defense and goes, is there no other questions for us, Amra? Uh, uh, are, are, are you possessed right now? Which which one, me or <laughs> Asimra? No, Asimra. Oh, Asimra. Ask him. <laughs> are you possessed right now? Asimra just goes. Oh. 
I don't know. I don't know. The sun's in me still, I think. I still feel sun fire. Well, 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 that was one of our questions that uh, we will be following up with the Celestials about, um, especially if you are possessed, can your faith uh, not be read on the living documents that we saw prior? Yeah. Uh, I mean, possibly. Rod is this Lord of the Sun. Does this make any sense to you? And then Rod just kind of goes, if he's possessed, there still would be a notation of when he became possessed. I mean, if if he worshipped me at all and it was there and it's no longer there, it would have to be tampered with, but I don't know. I, what if I don't somebody's, know. you know, blocking the signal? Uh, well, I, I, I believe we we have just to answer the question the evidence is obviously tampered with because we are aware as shown in the evidence that awesome Ra happens to ironically i'm sure with Ra in his name worship Ra, and if he's not within the records in any manner even though we have proven that he worships Ra, then things have been tampered with <laughs> this, this was a great conversation i don't know why we're still having it Yes, quite right. It appears that the evidence of tampering itself is no longer uh, viable evidence. That being said, Asim Ra, please, if you could step down. <clears throat> al Muhamia, representing Ravan, as the prosecution, would like to call to the witness stand Shionibus of Nubia. Uh, doing this again? Uh, you're unable to, as that witness was put away and invalidated that witness was put away without questions for me at the time i had no questions your honor if you'd like to i would like to cross-examine uh shown now under the precedent of new information given the relationship between her and the defendant this was never really brought up at the point in time before i was not able to ask questions about this would you allow the prosecution to ask a few questions and i believe i'll be done until i make my final statement He's going to make a diplomacy check. Hopefully the GM doesn't botch this. Yeah. Oh, yes, Michael, what's up? I was wondering, can we as players make an opposing check on this? If you have a hero point, you can object. It's not an, it's not an opposing role. It's an objection. You have to come up with a, uh, you know, a solid objection point. Yeah. There. All right. Anyone? <laughs> What's, Sorry, I mean, I, I was under the impression that Shionibus' shit was either struck from the record or told that they couldn't return to the stand. That's no, they were I just thought. asked to step down uh, so okay. that they could call in Ra instead. Got it. Okay. Okay. Any objections before Shionibus takes the witness stand? Who's still, who's on the witness stand right now? Asim Ra, who is currently Asim being Ra. asked to lead, potentially to lead the witness stand in exchange for Shionibus. I think the only potential objection we have here is that we already ruled that this was an irrelevant portion of the case, and to mm -hmm. say that this is new information is uh, incorrect. But um, I do not have a hero point. That's all, what I can just offer. I mean, yeah, I don't have a hero point either. Did we still have four hero points given to us as of last session? Uh, they will refresh every. They refresh okay. every session. Yeah. Okay. So you didn't give us. So you didn't give us hero points at the beginning of this session because if everyone you did. Well, every, everyone starts with the one hero one. point, and uh -huh. then I believe you and Ichi got one for the legally blonde reference. Uh, at least as in reference to you and Sam. Uh, I don't recall if I gave Mahooch out any says, others. Wait. Oh. Mahooch says, "Wait, I have a hero point." He, Mahooch, Mahooch does have a hero point. All right, Mahooch in the chat. <clears throat> Who are you going to give that hero point to? It's all on you. Um, you know, Jackson also has a hero point. I mean, I was just point? going to do to be what? cool, Tobias. Or give um, really dumb puns. Uh, Mahooch says he'll take bitters. Um, <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take the hero point. Uh, okay. I will be uh, bidding mm -hmm. one highlighted message that says whatever you want on it. <laughs> Th those hundred channel points. Any of us can do that. Uh, yeah, but none <laughs> of you started first. 
<laughs> Ooh. I took the initiative. Welcome to the bartering part of Edge of Legend. If anyone wants to barter, Michael, Sam, Kylie, please barter with our audience. Fight I'm for a- your life. I'm good. You can, you can have it. You can have it, Tobias. Oh, I don't want it. I, I barter a poem to, a give, it to, if wow. to give it to Sydney. I will write you a poem. Yeah, just give it. I don't want it. <laughs> well, but I, I want to write a poem, so give it to Sydney anyway. <laughs> cool. I was gonna say. All right, so I think we've we've okay. decided Sydney's gonna get the hero point. Uh, so Sydney, what is your objection <clears throat> to uh, this? Uh, my objection is, um, I'd like to ask Awesome Ron to do one more thing, just one, before we strike him from the stand. Right. <laughs> What? Fair. Uh, Anubis Anubis is okay with that, yeah. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Vigilant Sleeper, thank you very much. Um, hmm. Uh, Awesome Ra, can you try praying to Ravon right now? I mean... To Ra? To Ra, (laughs) crap. Yeah, don't pray to to Ravon. I'm sorry. I don't know when I can't worm. No, I, I, I listen. I'm, I'm up there on the witness stand. I, I don't know what you want. Okay, I mean, so you could yeah, try I'll... It, train to both, but then he'll just come out of you, as we saw, you know, yeah. back in the other. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be happy to, to, to pray to Ra. Um, he starts kind of lifting his hands up and he starts muttering and he's praying in uh, Nubian Elvish. Um, are you looking for something specific? Um, yeah, I'm looking to see if the prayer appears on the ledger. Okay, give me a religion check. Okay. Because if his prayer appears on the ledger, you know, it's some. But if it doesn't appear on the ledger, that's weird. You know? It's weird. It's weird. You said religion. Um, that's a 25. So Awesome Ra starts to pray. You see his body start to slowly glow warm like there's a candle lit inside of a tiny lantern, but it's not quite able to break through the veil of darkness that the lantern would need to do. Struggling, a struggling light. As he prays and the light begins to struggle, looking at the record, if you will, you see his name slowly start to form. Once it gets to the R for Ra, you see the A start to wipe off the, fo- the, the file. And you see that there's this kind of holy glow of energy as it's starting to be written. And then it starts to get wiped off in this horrible, ugly, purple bruise of fire. Look at that! That seems that like, like reasonable doubt. That looks like tampering. That looks like tampering. Look, he's trying to pray and he can't pray. Why is it his fault that he can't pray? Why? It's not. Yeah, look at that. That looks like that's not you're, you're... normal. I think it's invisible ink. <laughs> um, Hamia, objection, your honor. We've already established Ravon's a devil. This is tampered evidence. Yes, it it's a good point. Tampered. Yeah, but it's happening like right now in real life. Relevance to ownership of person's soul. If Ravon is no longer in question, then this means that he would have to go to either the land of the dead or here. I believe that's where we settled on, right? We said that that if he was never make any sense. Because if he can't go to the the nine hells, thing you do when you get a perm, you pray to your gods that your curls will come out well. And don't you know the one? rule about praying to your gods you don't stop halfway through or the curls won't set so if he's actively trying to pray to his god and it's not coming through the curls aren't setting the perm was never done and something's going on here i I'm going to give you a hero point and ask that you make a diplomacy check. Yes. I am, will assist this diplomacy check. Okay. Actively. I think I'm going to say, because the point is solid, but you're now combat going up against Amohamia's point of relevancy, this is going to be a, a DC of 30 that she has to beat. So if everyone oh, wants to help her. Shit. I'm yeah. rolling like terribly. Well, that's a dirty a 20 nine. to start. Dirty oh. 20. Hmm? 
Listen, one more person I'm helps just... out. I'm helping. I'm helping. I'm adding right now, though. I yeah. remember saying yeah. you do have that hero point I just gave you. You can cash in right now on this I'd or keep it, it for an objection. Let's see if we get a better roll. All right, let's see. Um, math. That's a twenty-one. Okay, that means it's a little bit better. You have to make up nine points. Technically, the maximum is four, but I will allow more if you can earn it. I I, I got a thirty-three. That gives oh. that gives some bonuses. But that's not going to override her role. So what was yours again, help. Sydney? I got 21. 21? Okay. Okay, that'll help. Uh-huh. Uh, 22. Okay. Tobias, what you got for me? I got a nine, dude. <laughs> Plus what? Plus oh, 35. No, no, no. Oh, did I roll? Please. No. Wait, what the? 1d20 plus 12. Why did it not? Yeah. Oh, I guess that's a 21 in it. <laughs> guess who's been reading his dice rolls wrong the whole time? Oh, no. <laughs> that explains the nat once. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so it's a 21. Is that correct? Yeah, it's a 21. Okay. Because here's here's the, the thing I gotta say. I was being a little gracious with the bonuses. I was like, I'm gonna let it happen. I'm gonna let it happen. Michael got like a 30 something. I'm gonna give me that's gonna be like a plus three. Okay. And then I forgot who it was, but someone got like a 20. I'm like, I'll make that a plus two. And then someone's like this. I'm like, oh okay, that's a plus one. Oh that's like a I did my math wrong. It's like, oh, that's like a that's like a plus seven. She needs nine more. And then he rolled a 21. And that plus two makes it a plus nine, meaning she hits the 30 with a 21 and she makes the argument valid valid. about the praying for the perm. And Anubis is just staring stunned and he goes, you make a good point. Taking in the fact that we've established that Ravon is a devil and has ownership issues and will blah 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 and it's clear that the prayer has been stopped and tampered with by what I imagine is diabolical forces then that would mean that this entire ownership deliberation is invalid and we have to go for the original owner for Ra he takes a gavel and he slams it down and the gavel of course made out of bones like a skull and slams it down and he says hear my judgment now Asum Ra's soul is forever bonded to the sun god Ra and upon punishment of war and death we will remove the influence of Ravan and forever immune and forbid him to gain access to the assets and personage of Asim Ra Asim Ra your soul has been forever bonded to the god of the sun. You may walk these mortal lands as you had before. Maybe you can find a ring and see if it'll stick on a finger this time. <laughs> <laughs> so with I that... know where it is. Just give me a second to find it. <laughs> You know where it is, just find it's been it. been 500 years. I can't believe you dropped it down a well. Oh, <laughs> so don't start with me. Has anybody seen Little Timmy? Timmy? That? So with that, al Muhammad stands up, gets his papers together, adjusts his glasses, and he goes, thank you very much for this day in court, Your Honor. Thank you, defense. You are wonderful. Awesome, Ra. Congratulations on your new lease on your immortal life. Hey, hey, buddy. Hmm. You did great. Oh, don't you? Yeah, don't forget to call him. Oh, you know what? You're right. Here, hold on. He reaches into his jacket, pulls out a card, slides across the table to you all. If you ever need representation again, please, let's do lunch. And with that, Asimra, I mean, uh, uh, Omohamia turns and walks and vanishes in a vermilion cloud of fire and smoke. And he laughs. Everyone give me a perception check really fast. This is a sound-based perception check to see if you can hear what al Muhammad is whispering under his breath when he leaves. Yeah, 28. I want to know if he's mad or if he's happy and he's just acting mad. 29. 30, said, 20. Kylie, you said 28? 
28. 28, 29, 20. 23. 23, Michael. Um. I got a 28. I also want to say Rufus kind of like looks around, go, it's kind of says it out loud. Did, did, did anybody ever find out what's going on in the red waist? <laughs> <laughs> so 28, 29. So the 28s and 29s are Sam, Kylie, and Michael. Mm-hmm. You hear Al Muhammad as he's leaving and says, Well, if he couldn't get his soul, at least we'll take his home. Well, Ravon, I hope your distraction was all you needed. And he vanishes. You kind of, and you three start to realize the sentinel that was asked to go and report on the red waste has not come back. At this at this point, though, you see um, Anubis start to lift up Asimra, who starts glowing now. That flickering flame that he had when he was praying proceeds to burst forth like a full sun rising over the horizons, and you see coming from his back, pooling. In a form made entirely of blood and smoke, a version of him that he would have become if Ravon had taken his soul and made him the avatar, the ever-destructive, ever-oppressive, burning sun. And you see this bloody version that would become him scream and writhe in midair like he's lost drowning. And then suddenly he freezes and bursts blood trickling like a fine red mist. Awesome Ra now burning with great pride and love. His heat ignites and dries the blood away. And when he lands, you see his eyes now. Kylie, you see these eyes that you have not looked into for hundreds of years. Not the light corona with the evil chain and crown in it, but you're seeing his beautiful golden brown eyes just, just wreathing with energy. And a smile, a confident, laid-back smile that you've always known as he says, ah, I'm sorry about the ring thing. If need be, we'll put it on ice. We'll come back to it later. She's going to run and give him a hug. He wraps two arms around your lower waist and just presses you in warmly. Don't look like ice to me! <laughs> All right, well... um, where to now? I think we have. She's gonna let go and like have him, like touch his face and then put her hands on his shoulders and then pull away. I think we have much bigger problems now. What do you? What do you mean? That sentinel never came back. I think we have a war on our hands. You see in the distance, Set just goes, oh, his ass is mine! And you see Set vanish. And that is where we're going to take a five-minute break when we come back, part two of what is probably going to be, I think, the final episode of The Trial of Awesome Ra. We'll see you at 9.47 p.m. See you then. His ass really is his. Hello! Thank you so much for that five-minute break. We are back, and we are ready to go. So, uh, as you have reconnected with us, Simra, now no longer uh, influenced by Ravon, uh, you realize the Sentinel has not come back from the Red Wastes. Kylie, what do you do? I'm going to... (laughs) That's a good question. I'm going to go up to Anubis. Bow. Go to a knee per usual because mm-hmm. he's still a god and he's my god. Um, we, I am very concerned we have bigger problems and I do think that we need to get to the waste as soon as possible. As, as this is this very like prominent exchange is occurring, uh, Tobias is going to like grab the business card off the table pocket it uh and at not break a moment he just keeps moving forward towards anubis so he's like hey man we gotta go <laughs> anubis Ooh. looks oh y- yeah kelly do i notice his finger just gone it's oh you, you did earlier didn't you? i don't remember did i, I, I yes you did because he was grabbing up yeah. on his yeah that's right. right i think he was missing on his executioner's weapon okay that's so it. in that case establish you see it uh he he looks fondly 
at Shonabis and then looks up at uh, you know Tobias coming. We got we gotta go. <laughs> we gotta go. And he goes, I suppose you do. Daughter of the Sands, I wish to help you before you leave. One last gift, if I may. I, I mean, if we have time, it seems like this is kind of crucial. It won't take but a few moments. Please hand me your bow. I'll oh. hand over her bow. He takes the bow and then he grabs you by your hand and you see his thumb starts to kind of uh, like work on the ring of Horus that you have on your hand, mm-hmm. the lesser ring of Horus. And the bow in his hand starts to charge. You see this uh, creeping black energy moving like ichor down the wood and then as it follows through from tip to bottom it shines and you see this dark gleam on the bow the same happens with your ring uh you have been granted the rune of the reaper a weapon etched with the rune of the reaper deals an additional 1d6 necrotic damage as it channels the power of the land of the dead. This damage is not considered healing for those with negative healing effects. On a on a critical hit, DC 24 willpower save. Uh, on a fail of that save, the target gains the drained one condition for one round. Oh. Yo. And your ring the lesser ring of Horus now becomes the full ring of Horus. Uh, and this can be upgraded later down the road to the major ring of Horus. Uh, at this point in time, this ring, let's see if I can find the, there you go. So the damage that your ranged attacks do, the bonus damage, is no longer based on your wisdom modifiers, now based on your dexterity modifiers. So it's dexterity to hit and damage when you use a bow. Also, the first range increment is increased by 30 feet instead of 10 feet. So whatever your normal range in a bow is, add 30 to that. That's how far you can shoot before you start taking penalties. Um, You are also granted a wooden box of other magical items that you can take with you on your journeys and this fight in the Red Ways to come. Uh, The first item Shonibus that you see it looks like a, a uh, almost worn thin kind of bear fabric cloak with a hood. It has a sort of uh, old gray color to it, and you can see bones sewn into the fabric. However, they make no noise, no rattling, no clinking. This is the veil of Duat. This gray, what's that? I said, yo! (laughs) The Veil of Duat. This dark gray hooded cloak is stitched with bones and dried organs with a slight oily feeling to the touch from the the threadbare fibers it is spun from. Wearing this cloak confirms a plus one stealth item bonus, plus two in dim light or darkness. The cloak also grants use of the chill touch cantrip relevant to your level. You get a ranged necromantic attack. There is uh, two special powers that this cloak can do once per day as two actions. The first one, by pulling the hood up, you can decide which one you want to do. You become edgier. Super edgy. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it says here by pulling the hood up, the first choice is you gain the negative healing trait and lose positive healing traits. You get to cast darkness, making it a 20-foot burst of darkness around you, though you do not suffer penalties from darkness. However, this burst is centered around you and will follow you for a one-minute duration until the spell ends. Hey, wow. we're... Oh, we're back. Oh, there we go. We're back. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Interesting. All right. Well, we're back, and that's what matters. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to go back with the magical items that you all have been receiving. Um, so going with, you put the hood up. Doing so is two actions. Once per day, you can either uh, make a 20-foot burst of darkness that you can see through, 
that you know of course you don't have any penalties with that lasts for one minute or by putting it up you can do a shadow jump um for a range of 120 feet to any place you can see where there is a shadow present low light or darkness this counts as a teleportation effect and can only take you uh, or whoever's wearing it i should say uh, and all your equipment but no one else so if you for whatever reason don't want to equip this there's still some effect to it for someone else now the last two items you get there's the amulet of anpu's voice this choker is made of a tightened leather and gauze that fits snugly around without discomfort uh the neck speaking with this grants a plus one to intimidate and diplomacy checks with undead creatures or creatures with the undead trait any save uh an undead creature makes against a command spell or spell with a vocal and or mental component, the undead creature's save counts as one level less. Uh, and as two actions once per day, you can cast Rouse Skeletons, but only uh, the spell will only last three rounds and does not require an action to sustain. Uh, this will also increase level 15. Uh, and last but not least, the, you get a magical item called the Holy Canoptic Jar. This hand-sized urn seems heavy with pungent and nauseating and embalming fluid. Inside is a dense organ of unknown anatomy, and it churns the fluids in a manner in respect to the magical secrets uh, and reverence of Anubis and his practice of embalming and preserving a body. This jar has one charge in it a day. When the jar is used, it can either be used to add a plus two recovery roll to come back from death, but doing so does not remove the wounded condition, or uh, you can use it to, uh, I believe, automatically stabilize, and they do not get the wounded condition on recovery. So you're given basically a giant foot locker of Anubis gear. Yeah. It uh, and I should say that the urn with the one charge should refresh uh, every morning. Good to know. Yes. Cool. I I'm cool. just getting like mental images of Undertaker's urn. That powerful artifact. Uh, yeah, so you have a whole plethora of new magical items. Your ring and your bow have been increased. Uh, you have a hooded cloak, a necklace, a jar, you have a bunch of things. If you don't really know who you want to get them all to or you want to wear them all right now, you can. Uh, but once you figure out where those items are going to go, uh, Anubis does make a, a sort of summoning gesture and will teleport you to the Red Wastes. Let's go. I just finger guns him as we leave. Okay. They're crossbows? They're finger crossbows. Finger crossbows? No, they're, they're thunk, finger thunk. guns. Thunk, thunk. All right, so with the plethora of new magical items and upgrades, you are then thrown out of uh, Anubis's chambers. You're back now to the Red Wastes. Do you want to be on the outside of the Red Wastes or knee-deep in it? Knee-deep. Let's fucking go. I hear one vote for knee-deep. I've kind of gone for knee-deep. Let's go. I hear two votes for knee-deep. I just need one more. Let me check my defenses now. <laughs> sure, why not? We'll go knee deep. Okay. So uh, the outside world sees this bone uh, scale form. And as it forms out in the middle of the earth, uh, the scales drop down. As it drops down, you come walking out of the scale. The bony scale of judgment vanishes. You are now up to about your calves and what you can only describe as a mixture of blood and sand. Looking around, you see a plethora of demons basically breaking from the earth, pulling themselves out, and scrambling to fight. You notice uh, the armies of the Nubian elves and the Nubian humans working to kill these demons as, as much as they can. Uh, you see moving and parting this army of conflict, a familiar face, the bony humanoid draconic entity, the lesser devil that first tried to uh, argue with you in the first round of deliberations, who failed. And as he sees you, he says, Kill that one. It is my time to redeem myself to Ravon. 
I may not have argued well in court, but I will slaughter you here and I will send you to him in the hells. Hey, shut up. What? I'm, I'm, I'm making a grandstanding. Hey, shut up. But I'm trying we to. We already won. Just go home. But I, we this, are, is, nope, this nope. is my time. I'm rolling an intimidate. Okay, go right ahead. <laughs> Um. Oh my gosh. Uh, is Set here? Is he uh, already back? I want. I want to get to that point. Okay. That is legitimate. That is legitimately a natural one. Uh, okay. Oh, no. So as I you, read it. So it's an eleven, but it's a one. So as you try to, uh, uh, you know, tell this devil absolutely off, absolutely not. He just, he just roars at you, and you are now frightened. One. Uh, oh. As that happens. Ugh. You hear in the distance this heavy slamming of of iron rot chain as Ravon is just starting to like kill and slaughter. And then off in the distance, this screaming rage sound can be heard echoing over the dunes in the distance. And a fire tornado starts to enter the Red Wastes once again. Bursting out of the fire tornado, you see Set with a with an axe in one hand in the scimitar that Shonibus gave him to summon him in the other, and he's just screaming, bring me Ravon, as he just starts charging. He's ready for the, uh... For the ass. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> now, mm-hmm. present for this fight, everyone here, Asimra, and Morel, who this time, I swear to God, I'm not going to lose his placement in initiative because I'm going to roll it. So now everyone... The battle for the Red Wastes has started. Please roll initiative. Ooh. Not good. Mm-hmm. Come on. Yeah, no, the, the the paladins aren't rolling well either, at least not the NPCs. Um, uh, yeah, I got dirty 20. Oh, bad. 26. 24. Okay, same go 24. Uh, Michael, was yours? You're muted, by the way. Uh, well, yeah, uh, just give me a second. I'm adding. <laughs> okay. Uh, 18. 18. Okay. Let's see. Michael, Sam, Alona. Kylie, what's yours? Uh, so I got a nat one, um, which makes it a 14, though. Hmm. Okay, 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 okay. You're just so shaken by all of it. There's, uh, there's a lot of gifts I just got. I was like, I'm stoked. <laughs> Sensory overload. I'm just, I'm just yoked to the gills with this. It's Christmas. <laughs> all right. Yeah, not every day your God gives you fat loot. Gifts. Right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Speaking well, of PJ, mm-hmm. yes. it was the cloak that has the darkness yeah yes that is correct cool okay I just yeah. make sure. okay so that being said uh as the fight progresses you see that it looks like the the bone devil uh that well the the bony looking devil uh is sort of kind of holding the advantage against the humans and the elves if you can fight this guy one-on-one and kill him you can turn the tide as Set and Ravon are now locked in godly combat. And without further ado, um, Joe, if you could play us any good old fight music, uh, we will go from there, starting with the devil who rolled a critical on his oh. whole pit. So he's going to go first. Everything's going to be fine. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is why I talk shit. I'm tanking now. Mm. All right, so uh, to to the one that's afraid, he is going to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's gonna do. He's gonna do uh, a, an ability that has a fun little addition to it. So he's gonna do a good old fashioned bite. All right, what's your AC, Tobias? Twenty two. With a die face of two, he rolls a 23. Uh, He's a big devil. He's a big devil. Then again, uh, he's also fighting like nine people. So we'll see what happens. 
All right, so he has this fun little ability uh, called sadistic, a sadistic strike. Yeah, sadistic strike, my God. Whenever he attacks someone who's enfeebled, prone, or frightened, frightened. he does an extra 2d6 damage. No! Yeah, it's gonna be fine. All right, so let's see. Seven and 14 is 21. Hold on. Hopefully I don't kill you in one shot. No! I, 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 that'd be a lot. I don't I don't know if you could do that one. 33 damage. I'm fine. Okay. So he deals 33 damage with this bony maw that scrapes uh, through Terrible. your plate mail. Just gets a uh, huge chunk out of it. Yeah. Suddenly, the you, you thought uh, Tobias was already looking very sickly pale, uh, and that color has been refreshed in blood everywhere give me <clears throat> give me a dc 25 fortitude save tobias sure Ooh. Seventeen. Seventeen. okay so it doesn't work uh it is not a critical fail with a 10 down it is the little fails oh boy you're gonna take another 2d6 poison damage and okay. you're enfeebled one Okay, so you take another five poison damage and you're enfeebled one, which means you're gonna lose one to you're gonna lose one point to your uh strength based checks and uh abilities. Well that's enfeebled, right? Yeah, enfeebled. Yeah, yeah, no, I've already got it. You're good. Oh, okay, you're good. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so that's gonna be his opening round. Uh that being said, next up is Elona. I'll get my shield out now. <laughs> Okay. Um, in the meantime, PJ, could you check the messages? Yes. In the yes, yes, yes. Right on top of that. Um. So, yes. Me. What can I do? Um. Well, I'd like to heal Tobias, so we're not starting with too much of a deficit. So we're going to use one of my charges of healing. Uh. I'm going to do. Yeah, that's going to be two actions. So that's going to be. Heightened. That's a lot. Okay. Hold, please, while I roll all of the dice to heal you, okay? Give me, like, one hot d d deserty second. Um. Uh, that's why it's doing just fine, covered in blood and screaming. Ah! Good. Ah. Uh, no. That's not great. Okay. Um, so that is a total of... Math is hard. Um... <laughs> right, while you're doing that math, uh, we will have to uh, say goodbye to Sam, who is amazing, but they have a conflict that they have to go take care of. So we are going to wish Sam a good night, and we'll see you next week, Sam. I love you. Bye-bye, Sam. Good night, good luck, Bye. and don't <laughs> die. I, I'm going to die real good. See you guys next week. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye, Sam. All right. all right um so you're healed i just deleted all of that math um you're healed 26 points of health tobias um and with my other action do i have anything that dispels fear let's find out or enfeebled would be great <laughs> or enfeebled do i have anything that <laughs> dispels that i actually don't think that i do um hmm Darn. No. I, I don't. So with the rest, the other action, um, I have, I'm going to, can I, what can I do? I'm going to punch the devil. All right. Uh, how many actions? You have one action left, right? I have one action to punch. Is that okay? Can I punch with one action? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. It's been a minute since I punched something, so. Yeah. It's not going to do much, but I'm real frustrated that it already messed up Tobias. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I'm, I'm doing I'm doing fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Does a 17 hit? 17 will not hit, unfortunately. Rats. She whiffs it um, because she was just thrown in the middle of battle um, after just being in court. And it's not necessarily 
uh, her strong suit. So she whiffs it real bad. Not great. Maybe eat some sand. <laughs> All right. So with the uh, another critical whiff, but unfortunately a whiff, uh, your turn is done, and we will be going to uh, Tobias next. All right. Well, I'll have a chance now to grab my shield and sword, um, and I'll go ahead and uh, retaliate against my my foe with this striking, disrupting longsword. Heck yeah! Roll to hit. Uh, that'll be 22. Okay, 22. That will hit. Okay. Yeah. I love this movie. That'll be for 12 damage. 12 damage? Okay. Uh, remind me, it's a disrupting one, right? Is that... It's is only that... undead. Got it, okay. So you said 15? Uh, no, I said 12. 12, thank you. Okay. All right, uh, the blade strike does seem to hit uh, the uh, creature, the this this almost dragon-looking creature made of bones with devil horns, named uh, this this Ozeluth does. Oh, you threw me out of court! You you humiliated me! And I'll throw you out of the mortal plane. Bring it, Paladin! I'll just come back later. That's fine. <laughs> we'll do it all over again. Uh, you did one action to raise the shield, one action to strike, I believe? Uh, yep. Uh, can I do another strike? Yes, you can. I'll be at a minus five. Okay. Uh, uh that is a 21 to hit. That, oh, so close. That will miss by, by like, okay. just a little bit. Yep. All right. Next up, we have Michael. What's Rufa going to do against a very large bone devil? Well, okay, it's called an ozolith. It just looks like it's made of bones. Unmute myself. Um, all right. Well, um, I already rolled my Defy the Stratagem roll, and I got a really good roll, so I got a question for you, PJ. Yeah. Is this devil holding a weapon? He, no, he is the weapon. Oh, he is? Okay. So, all right, then. I'm really glad I have a flow chart that I made. <laughs> Of a combat flow chart, I'm gonna break out today. Yeah. So first action, demoralize, and because I have a feat called intimidating glare, it's going. I could just I just give him a dirty look, but I'm gonna say something anyway. So mm -hmm. Rupa kind of looks at the bone devil and goes, "It's been a very, very long day." So Rufa, it's gonna take it out on you. He kind of when he says that, he kind of you know. Put down the glass a little bit and just give that intimidating glare. <laughs> all right, all right. So, what was the rule for that in, for that intimidation? All right, that has been. Let me one second. Let me do math. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Let's see, there is my calculator. I should not have closed it. Why did I close my calculator? This plus intimidation. Do I get a plus one because we're still kind of or now? I think that's a chat. I'm going to say no. Okay. Well, that's a 29 then. That still hits. Absolutely does. All right. So th they're feared one now. And okay. my next action, my second action is faint. Okay. So I am going to roll. I believe that's a uh, deception, right? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Yes. Against their will DC or the precise perception. perception. DC. Yeah. yeah. Plus, let's see. Yeah. 15 plus 13 is a 28 on that. 28? I'm just loading them up with debuffs right now. So <laughs> close. You were a few points off from the perception DC, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Well, I still now get to use my device stratagem roll, which I already rolled, which was a nat 20. Nat 20 with a strategic strike. Heck yes. All right. All right. So uh, 
roll the damage and double it. Roll the whip, any other bonuses, and of course the studied strike bonuses. Roll that, double it. All right. Oh. All right, I rolled it so hard it disappeared. So I'm gonna have to get another T4. Oh no. I'll find it later. I'm probably gonna end up stepping on it later. So. Oh, like a Lego. Yeah. I, I lost, I had like these pink dice, right? And I lost uh, a, a pink D4 on what can best be described as salmon tile. And I was like, this is it. This is how I die. I'm just going to step on this D4 and be sent to sent to the angels. The shadow realm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I got, uh, I rolled a 16 and then doubling that would be a 32. <gasps> okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, and I hope that's good, because otherwise, well, I'm I'm screwed. <sighs> okay. If I do, now I gotta do math. My brain is not having it. There we go. Flowchart, no. man. Flowchart. <laughs> eh, Flowchart works a little differently when you're when you're doing arithmetic and realizing that you're doing it wrong, like a like a goober. A goofy okay. goober, yeah. A go I'm, I'm a, such a goofy goober. Yeah. Um, I wish I could argue, but facts are facts. Okay, so uh, Michael, turn done. Yes. All right. The whip hits the bony hide of this creature, and you can see it impact. But it's like it's, it just, it's like ringing a, a, an anvil with a hammer. Like you can tell you hit it. But it's, um, it did take damage. Next up is wow. Okay. Uh, Morel is no. Yeah, Morel's gonna go. Um, he is going to uh, basically run up, pick up his shield, and throw a punch at this guy. Get him. Okay. So he throws a punch. You see he just kind of hit a bone kind of on the way out. and Bounces off. And he goes... <sighs> puts his hands on his shield and then just starts to, like, shield bash into the creature. Okay, yeah, no, these dice suck today. Uh, he tries to swing into him. The shield slammed into the bone, and with that, he repositions himself behind his shield, and then just hunkers down. He is a he's a line. But oof, I cannot roll above a three with that man. All right, next up, that'll do. You hear uh this burning sound like like a candle being lit and as you look back you see this uh corona of fire as awesome rock just grabs the sky pulls a spear and a shield from thin air slams the butt of the spear down the ground pops out and charges at the creature and he just says by the power of raw and just slams the spear into him uh <laughs> and a giant corona of fire <laughs> starts to come out from him. Uh, he will do... For a second, it just threw me back to She-Ra. The she power of Grayskull! <laughs> That's what's happening. I have the power! Does he turn into like a 10-foot like warrior princess with a really badass flowing head of hair? So That's pretty cool. Uh, he, I don't... I, I mean, like, I feel like he should. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna put the doubt that you Yeah, can we just roll for I that? I think you should. <laughs> you, do, you, do you want him to have long, flowing, golden locks? I mean, well, he, he did, did just go just... Super Saiyan. <gasps> he just activated his smite, really. But yeah, he kind of did. Yeah, he kind of did. Well, he was just, you know, maybe he's just really excited because he got his soul saved. And, like, he's just, like, really feeling raw right now. <laughs> feeling raw. He's feeling the the, the hoorah rah. That's what he's feeling. Sorry. All right. So next up, Kylie, you see Awesome Ra just glowing like the morning sun. Skin just bright gold, shooting fire off. Spear of Ra, shield up, charges, strikes. There's everyone there fighting the Ozolith. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to use. I assume I'm going to be in the back of the group because archers aren't in front. Oh, uh, I'm going to use all three actions and I'm going to burn one of my ring of shoulders to ignore my penalty for one of them. 
and we just gonna lock and load. All right, all right, all right. Uh, roll to hit, and let me know what the number is when you're ready. Oh, that's cocked. Hold on. Ugh, that's two twenty fives and one twenty four to hit. Okay, two twenty fives and one twenty four. Sorry, one dirty twenty, because it's one. a minus. Is minus four for the minus four first for penalty? the second strike. Yeah. Right. So yeah, dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. So it was a twenty four and a twenty. Yeah, two twenty four is and a twenty. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so the twenty fours will hit. The twenty will miss. Cool. 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 It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Ooh, not the best I've ever rolled, but it's okay. Uh... Oh. Twenty-four piercing damage. Well, I guess twenty piercing damage for necrotic damage. Five necrotic damage, sorry. And that's for the first Whatever hit, correct? You want to that. That's for them in total. Oh, for this? Okay, in total. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, the one arrow goes wide, but the two start to sink in. The creature is... The devil is just screaming in pain now. He's, his rage starts to overtake him a bit. Uh, top of the next round, the, uh, the creature, the devil, is going to go... Unless there's any other actions you can do, Kylie? Just making sure. Uh, all I want is, is his teeth still stink into Tobias? Uh, no, he has since pulled them out, but he is, uh, basically repurposing his attack now. Um, it's just a quick... You have absolutely no power here, so get fucked. <laughs> Yasluth turns. All right, then then I will kill those who have it. And he marks you. Um, hey, give me. Rats. I have power too. <laughs> power. Uh, power. So, uh, let's see here. He's going to make, uh, suddenly you see out of his mouth, one of the bone teeth just kind of break out and shoots at you. Uh, Shionibus. Cool. Um... Does a 22 hit you, Shunabis? Me to beat it. All right, so it will hit. Uh, let's see. Right. You are going to take... Not a lot, honestly. You're going to be taking about uh, five piercing damage as this huh. bone shard just scrapes on by. Uh, and with that, uh, he's going to use one action to move. Um, and with that movement getting close, comes right up to you. You see this this kind of scorpion-like bone tail comes out, and you can see uh, this sinew in the bone pulsing like a heartbeat as it uh, starts to swell at the tip, and he tries to dive it down at your being. Oh, no. Critical 20 is you. No. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're fine. All right. So I will be rolling the damage for this. You know, talk shit, get hit. I get it. It, it, it happens. I, it, that's been the theme this entire fight. <laughs> uh, okay, so he didn't roll too great, but I will need a fortitude save from you. Right on. Reap Psyche's literally like, why does Shionibus get critted so often? Because <laughs> talk shit, get hit. I, I do it to myself. Uh, 24. 24. Lucky Wait, you. no, hmm? I didn't add that. Huh? 25, sorry. You still surpass the DC. Sorry. You do not take the venom of the creature into your body. 
So that means that you only take, let's see. You only take 31 piercing damage. 31? Three, one, yes, 31 piercing damage as the stinger just dives down into you. That will be his turn. Uh, he is at the back of the party. He's about 30 feet away from everyone else, give or take. Uh, and he is squared up with Shionibus. Next up in the initiative is Ilona. Ilona, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to heal Shionibus. <laughs> it's, listen, Hit him first. 31, Hit 31 him first. plus 5. What am I going to do? You guys are the heavy hitters. I'm up, I'm up still. You're, I'm well, fine. Yeah, but if he hits you like that again, where are you going to be? We know PJ's gonna roll threes, it's fine. Well, for the NPCs that are on our side! Um, I'm rolling pretty bad. Well, I do actually have a new spell. Open the bear. <laughs> that's a reaction. So, that, you know what? Fine, if you if you say you're fine, then I'm going to, I'm going to summon my spirit guardian. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Uh, what's the save for that I have to make? Um, I don't know. Okay. I don't have that written down. It's okay. I'll um, look that up right now. You said spirit. Crap. Yeah, spiritual guardian. Spiritual guardian. It's been a minute since it's... I've fought. Yep. Been a hot minute. I do. I have it in my notes. Do I? No. No, I don't. I don't. Da, 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 da. Well, you know what? The the spirit guardian appears, and you know what the form they take this time? What's that? Someone you don't recognize. Your mom. I, I don't know what my mom looks like. Yeah, someone you don't recognize. So, well, so it takes the form of someone that I don't recognize. Uh, that no one in the party recognizes. Okay. Um. Yeah. So your mom is still valid until I've corrected. <laughs> this. Okay, spiritual guardian. Um, a medium guardian made of magical force appears and attacks a foe within range. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Each. Okay. 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 Ah, uh, reading so fast. Um. The, the, the Guardian strikes or melee spell attacks um, to strike. So I summon it and strike you with it. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's just a, it's a melee spell attack. So what is that modifier? It's Perfect. my spell, it's my spell mod, right? Yeah, it'd be spell like if you're tackle? casting, yeah, it'd be like if you're casting yeah. Divine Lands or something. Yeah, so just roll to hit Wait. with that. Okay, well that's good. The spell attack roll is much higher than, than unarmed. Because uh, no muscles, working on it. I haven't worked out in a while. Um, that's cocked. Give me a minute. Okay, okay, okay. We're in the zone, and it's not on beat. But that's okay, cause we're getting there. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven will hit. Um, oh. Sweet. So why don't you roll damage? I believe it's one d8 plus your spellcasting ability modifier. Nope, two d8 nope. plus spellcasting ability modifier. I oh, think. Okay. Yeah, it does because I'm casting it heightened. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. That works. All right, two d8 plus. That's the wrong application. That's a calculator. Aha! I'll need it later. Wow. All right, two d8 plus spellcaster ability mod. Uh, okay. Alrighty then. So that is not the best, but it's still damage. Uh, that's 13 points of damage. Okay. Wait. Thir yeah, it is. It's 13 points of damage. I did not roll well. That's okay. 13 points of damage. Uh, the creature is struck, and I believe that uh, spells a uh, two action cast. Mm -hmm. Did you, uh, I believe, have one action left? What are you going to do with the last action? Um, I'm going to cast Guidance on who's who's next in our lineup. Um, I'm sure, it's me. Looking Tobias. around, yeah, it does look like Tobias. Looks like he's ready to go. I'll cast Guidance on Tobias. 
Congratulations. What you get a plus do? one status bonus on attack rolls, saving throws, or skill checks. What's you it get called? You plus one. Guidance. Guidance. I just boop you, and I'm like, you're gonna do good, buddy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, that means Tobias, uh, you're up next. What are you gonna do? All right. Uh, I'm going to go fuck this man. Um, <laughs> said what I said. Uh, so is 30 feet worth one of my move actions? Uh, yeah, one move action is equal to your total speed. What is my total speed? Where the hell is that? No, it's 20 feet. Look. So uh, I will go ahead and spend two of those actions blitzing this motherfucker. Uh, and I'll, I'll go ahead and take the longsword fucking go. All right, roll to hit. Hell yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> 14. <laughs> Total? Yeah. <laughs> that, that misses, I'm sorry. Uh, that's what happens when you roll a 2. Yeah, that'll do it. I, I'm not fucking this man. <laughs> no, not not today. No, sir. <laughs> uh, next up is Michael. <laughs> Michael, what are you going to do? Uh, you are muted, by the way. Sorry. I already rolled my, de rolled my device tragedy, and I rolled real bad, so I'm not going to do a melee attack, because that would be dumb. <laughs> uh, awesome. What? Mm -hmm. Instead, I will use my first action to use my ability on Monk. All right. Which, let's see, we'll quick, quick put that up. Um, I will, Rufus going to incite, uh, launch a insightful quip at this foe distracting them and choose a foe within 30 feet and I get to roll a diplomacy check against the target's will DC. Alright, what is the will, uh, the diplomacy check against that will DC? Alright, let's, let's find out. Okay. I am going to use my hero point on this. <laughs> alright, alright. It's real bad. It's one, I rolled a 1. <laughs> I'm using my hero point now. Yep. Okay, that's a lot better. <laughs> Yay! All right, what's the total to hit? So. Um, total for that's a thing, 29. Sorry. 29. Oh. And that goes against the will DC, right? There, it goes up against their will DC, yes. Yep, that will be a success. All right, so they now have a minus two perception and will saves for a whole minute, which is, I think, ah. six rounds, right? Yep. All right, and with my last action i'm going to use i'm a spellcaster now folks yeah so what? um rufus gonna put one finger on his head and pull a professor x and think really really hard and um cast days the cantrip Ooh. days and that's Ooh. heightened i believe automatically right uh yeah as a cantrip but it heightens to your level all right well actually Days, you actually have to roll, PJ, uh, a, a basic will DC. Mm -hmm. All right. So what is your DC to beat? I believe that is a 21. Awesome. Spell DC, right? Yep. Okay. Um, so he critted. <gasps> just, just a big old... D20, oh. 20 there. So you you try to reach out to your mind and you just hear him go, Lesser, don't get in my mind. And you kind of feel like a like a smacking return of, of mental energy. You take no damage, but the daze is ineffective. Okay. Uh, I'll say after the game, I'll, I'll say stop. We'll, we'll take a Okay. Uh, all right. So that being said, uh, da, 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 da. Next up is Morel. Morel is going to try and charge the beast again and strike him. He will finally hit him. Yay. He will do... Okay. So he runs up, and you see he kind of leaps off the air, cracks the demon in the jaw, who just kind of recoils from the hit. He stops and raises his shield up high for defense. Then he looks at Awesome Ra and just goes, You want to take the high ground, mate? To which Awesome Ra goes, Why not? He runs, let's see if he can even hit. Nope. 
nope, that's not a hit. He runs, jumps up high, the spear glows in the morning sky, and he comes down, moving through one of the one of the ribs, not hitting anything, and just lands in the dirt and looks at Morel and goes, But it looked cool, didn't it? Oh, it looked brilliant. Uh <laughs> um so fitting. Kylie, your turn. Okay. Um, given that we are now face to face and in very close contact, she's going to pull her dagger and like winter soldier flip and then just like come up and like just try to get some kind of cut in the face, at the neck, whatever she can. That first one misses, because that's, like, uh, 14 to hit. That will miss. Uh, second attack, same thing, a noun penalty. Nice. Oh. Do, do you have any hero points left? No, I didn't make a legally blonde joke. I just made <laughs> thong references today. That's all I, that's all I did. They were good references, though. They were good. Well, one more, just for good measure. Just because, screw it. Why not? Maybe you get a crit, who knows? Uh. That's, what is, what am I at? Like a minus 10? Uh, no, you'd be at a minus 8. Yeah. It's a 26 to hit, minus 8. That put me way under 18. So, it's <sighs> not. No matter what, it's gonna miss. So close, it's fine. yeah. All right, so you pull out your sword and you start striking and you can't quite get a clean purchase with this giant bone maw in front of you. Nice top, still they go. Top of the next round, the Ozolith smells blood and he is going to once again try to use his tail on Shionibus, his stinger. Does a... It's a 24 hit you. Yep, that hits. Oh, okay. So, it's not a critical, that's good. You're gonna take 18 damage from the stinger. Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, with his... Okay. After doing that... Oh, I need a fortitude save from you. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Okay, 22. 22. Okay. Unfortunately, that is not enough. So you will take another 8 poison damage from the huh. tail. How bad you looking? I'm up! Okay, okay. So as the tail strikes, and you can just feel this horrible burning sensation as the, the stinger just starts to flood your body with venom, the stinger comes up and does this massive sweep behind it. I need everyone else to make, uh, not sure, but everyone else to make a reflex save. Rats on a cracker. Morel's gonna go for it. Rats! Make it. Awesome. Rod's gonna go for it. Doesn't make right. it. All right. 24. 24. That works. 14. Unfortunately, you are now knocked prone. Uh, Michael Powell, how about you? Uh, and I believe you are muted. Sorry, I was adding. Uh, 25. You succeed. Uh, so Elona and Asumra are knocked prone. Everyone else is able to kind of jump or bounce the tail off of them in safety. With the last action that this uh, creature has, he is going to attempt a... Oh, this is nasty. He is going to attempt a stinger onto Elona. Ah, uh, son of a peach nut. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's your AC normally? Uh, uh, not great. It's, a uh, 17. 
Okay, and you're prone, so that's a minus two for that, because uh, you're considered flat-footed. So, normally a 15? Oh, uh, yeah. This is a dirty crit, then. Oh, great! So, ah! I'm gonna need a, uh, I need a fortitude save out of you, Alona. Out of me? Yes. Not the cleric! Yeah, the healer. The healer gonna die! And I got a two! A two? Oh no! Okay, okay, hold up. This is um, gonna get. Yes? It's a 13. A 13. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Where did, where did you go, Mr. D6? Don't go for me. I have to kill the cleric with you. <laughs> okay. Oh, this isn't going to be pretty. Okay. Listen. Reaps, like you said, they, they, they want to give you a hero point if you want it. Oh. No, it's too late. I'm Let me let me die so I can come back as a m mad bitch. <laughs> a mad bitch. <laughs> All right. So, you have enfeebled one status effect. Probably won't hurt you too much unless you start punching people. But you have taken uh, 15 poison damage. You know what? Let me restart that because I think I did my math wrong. Don't don't take down 15 points damage. You have taken a total of 59 damage. Ooh. Good goodbye. <laughs> it was nice knowing you. Alone is dead. How much is dead? I what, have what? 59 HP. Okay, so you're not dead, you're dying. I, I know. Oh, okay. Because really like, there's so many times it's like, I'm absolutely dead. I'm like, okay, no, it sucks, but you're not dead, dead. That, that can happen, no, no, no. but you're not. I, I know. Okay. But... How does healing someone out of being downed work? So, uh, if you want to help the healer, you can use a medicine check with battle medicine to heal her, or you can use a healing spell, lay cool. on hands, that's all I et cetera. Needed. I just need to know if that's how healing works. I can just... Right, right, right. All right, so that being said, um, it is now Alona's turn. Alona, please give me a recovery check. Well, you... I also have a question. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this works on me. Um, I'm going to, maybe I should take a look at that. Because I have Breath of Life, which is a reaction. Um, and so basically what happens with Breath of Life is that, um, it prevents death and restores up to 4d6 plus my ability modifier. Yeah. And I don't know if that affects me or if that affects just the people that I love. You That's feel? a good question. Regrettably, you'd have to be conscious to cast it. But, That's real. Yeah, but if you uh, do a recovery but, check, basically you're just gonna yeah. Well, this is where this is where I'm confused because it's mm -hmm. a, literally a reaction, and it, and the trigger is any living creature within range dies. So Nothing's does that count yet either. Me? What I will say, what I will say is, is that uh, since the, since you're actively casting the spell as a reaction to that event, but you cannot cast the spell because you're dying then unfortunately you won't be able to do that. Okay. Okay. what you can do um, is uh, do a recovery check, so roll a d20, um, okay. and you just have to make a, a flat check of 11 or up. Oh, it's 18. Oh, yeah. So, as this uh, tail just stabs through you into the sand, and you're in the, in the bleeding waist, or in the, the, the red uh, waist bleeding, uh, you are able to stabilize yourself. You are stabilized, you're at wounded one, um, but you don't have any HP. But you're not dying anymore. Well, that's good. Yeah. I'm relieved. That being said, Tobias, it is now your turn. Uh, seeing this go down, uh, Tobias is going to, to bring his sword up towards the tail as quickly as he can, uh, knowing, of course, it wouldn't stop what had just happened, but he would like to try and, and deal a little bit of, of fun that way. Okay. And that will be a 28 to hit. That will hit. 
And then damage wise. Will be 13 damage. 13 damage. Okay. Uh, he'll then take a take a solid like sliding swan dive uh, over to our downed healer, uh, okay. yelling, "By Minerva, I beseech thee!" Drops his hand and does lay on hands, healing 12 HP, and then hunkers down with the shield uh, with uh, I believe it's called everlasting stance. Yeah, Everstand stance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Everstand stance. Putting both hands behind his shield, ready to just like go. The long sword is upside down. His full body's braced behind this shield. Right, all right. So, uh, you make a, a wild strike. You find some meat to it, and the creature kind of moves and, and screams in pain as you place a hand on Alona and put a shield up. Um, next up is Michael. Michael, what are you gonna do? You are muted, Michael. Yeah. No, no, sorry. I was doing some math. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, once again, I rolled really, really bad on Devise Stratagem. Mm -hmm. Just to let you know, I rolled a two, so I'm not going to be making any melee attacks again this turn, because that would be dumb. Okay. Uh, so instead, Rufus is going to kind of reach, like, as soon as he sees Alona down, Rufus like, all right, we made Rufus bad. We're going to make Rufus spend money. And pulls out a scroll. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm gonna use it. It's gonna be, as you know, PJ. It's a, it's a magic missile scroll. Okay. <gasps> so I'm gonna use a arcane check, right? To use it. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. I think you have to beat the DC, and you're using what level of magic missile? Level uh, four. Okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Get him. Give me one second to add. Arcana. 28. 28. All right. That'll be enough to activate the scroll. Uh, roll damage for the fourth level magic missile. Yes. All right. Rufus, Rufus, when Rufus pulls open the scroll, it just kind of incinerates some blue fire. And from that blue fire... Six little bluebirds made out of force there and just flies out. And Rufus is counting them all in, sh in you know, Shinese. E, R, San, Si, U, Liu. And that would be a. That. Yes. 24 damage. All right. Nice, 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 nice. Get him with those little birds. I love that's your aesthetic. The birds fly out and start pummeling it, and you can see it's just moving back and forth, and you can see this this diabolic ichor just coming from the cracked bone of its body as it's bleeding all over the wastes. Uh, it's like Godzilla being attacked by jet fighter planes. <laughs> <laughs> just turning and swatting them yeah. away. Uh, okay, so that was two actions to activate the scroll? Uh, one action to activate a scroll, mm -hmm. and then uh, the two action is for my, actually using two actions to using the scroll. So that's all three actions. Got it, got it. Okay, activate the scroll. Boom, boom. Done and done. Uh, next up is uh, Morel, who runs over to where Tobias and uh, Alona is and uh, basically joins you in the Everstand stance with his shield, reaches back, also uh, heals Alona for another 12, and then stands there, and he, he kind of looks over to you, and he goes, "Thank you, Tobias. You, you like you, good mate." We'll talk after. Oh no! Now, with that, we cut to Awesome Ra, who runs over to Shionibus. Like Shionibus, you're there, facing this creature. You hear the sand <laughs> kind of slide and and get upturned as sliding in front of you. Shield up is Awesome Ra. Turning, slaps you on the foot, heals you for 12 damage, and he says, Sorry I'm late. Uh, I really thought I could make that hit. We're gonna have to hold a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, come on, Paladin, do better. Uh, with that being said, um, Shionibus, it is your turn. Uh, how far away am I from the creature? 
Um, you're about... Pythagoras, about 10 feet away. Hmm, okay, well, let's move to... So I'm a good 30 feet away. Oh. Um... She looks at Osmaraj like, you were never on time to begin with. And I'm gonna fire twice. Tobias is just gonna be looking at all this small talk, very just like, why the fuck are people talking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is a lot to hit. Hold on. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's a 32 to hit for the first. 32 to hit for the first, okay. And then for the second. Mm hmm. Is a miss because it's a 19. 19 will miss, unfortunately. All right. Movement. By the way, that 30 something that you rolled was a dirty crit. So I want you to uh, double the damage of this strike. Oh, yes. This guy's hit me quite a bit, and I'm already pissed off. Hold on, it's been so long. That's that's a that's a lot. Okay. Grabs the reserve dice bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's it's my favorite. I gotta pick the good dice. They're not behaving today, so that's why I'm like. Uh, and then a D ten. Oh, that's right for the really? deadly. Yeah, yeah. All right. Can't believe is it you're 2D10 playing Warhammer. Now, or is it still one? Say that again. Is it is it two D ten or still one? Uh, the deadly the deadly is still one D ten, but it gets to be okay, added to the the weapon. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Love hearing the sound of all these oh. clickety clacks. They're my favorite. Math. Yeah, because that's got to be 2d8 plus your dex modifier, plus 1d10, plus 1d6. And all that doubled. Doubled? Doubled. That's not right. That's 52 damage. What? What? Oh, wait, I forgot a d4. Ooh. What? <laughs> That's right, you have a sneak attack for 1d4, right? Yeah. Oh, so, 53 in total. 53 in total, okay. Okay. You big mad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Ali, tell me the tale of how oh. you are sending this bastard back to hell where he belongs. So, she moves with the grace of any poised killer <laughs> and is just going to very smoothly replace her dagger with her bow take a few steps back from the shield and just like turn shoot sideways and say pray that hell will let you back in after this one oh <gasps> Let the arrow fly with those words. Yazulith looks at you and just opens her mouth with, with a giant scream. How dare! And as I open the mouth, the arrow hits. <laughs> eyes grow. You see this horrible light start to beam from their eyes and mouth as they just kind of writhe and grab their body. And then they explode, bone shrapnel flying everywhere. As each piece of bone lands in the red waste, a hand comes up, grabs the bone, and pulls it down into hell. The Ozulith has returned to Ravon's domain. And speaking of Ravon's domain, you turn and you see Set and Ravon in a violent brawl. And all the other the, the demons and devils that have come out have since been killed by uh, the focus forces of both sides. And then Ravon, who is basically struggling against Set, looks at the combat around him, looks at the fight, clearly not his for the day, and looks at Set, who just has hands on him and says, I'm gonna break you. And Ravon just goes, mm. 
not today. And Ravon <sighs> fades into the ground. And Set just kind of falls through. Got all day, little boy. I know when you're ready for round two. And Set just kind of like starts to saunter off. And then he looks at everyone and he says, I want to apologize for for how my violence can sometimes become a little bit too much. I you did uh, great. Oh, thank you. No, I, I mean the fire tornado that's coming. You all need to leave. Now. Oh, you did great. The fu- oh. It's going to well, thank you. Uh, yeah. but really, you need to yeah. leave. There's a fire we, tornado we, we, coming. We should leave. We should leave. <laughs> thank you. Can I'm, you just, like, get us out? Where's the fun in that? And Set just kind of Bullshit. saunders off. <laughs> can, can Rufa be kind of running like um, the character from The Mummy when they're running away from the giant, the giant stamp monster thing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Total mummy vibes. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'd like to roll for shield surfing down dunes. <gasps> I don't have a shield. Spirit Guardian I, shield. I, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, when does Enfeebled and Frightened go away? I assume already. Uh, I'm sorry, say it one more time. Enfeebled and Frightened, I assume those things. Yes, enough time has passed. They've they've okay. worn off. Um, so yeah, you, you you're you're shield surfing, you're running, uh, and even though this fire tornado starts peeling through the red waste, you're able to get out in time. And there you are standing in between the Red Wastes, the Nubian Citadel, and the long desert road back to Anubis's chambers. Asim Ra is now fully himself again. And he looks and he goes, all right, well, this has been an amazing journey and I owe you literally my immortal soul. I guess the question is, what are we gonna do next? I have a great idea. Oh, what's what is that? Yeah, I gotta get the fuck home. Oh, give me a fortitude <laughs> save, Tobias. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Oh no. Uh, eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. So you're, you're saying like I I gotta get home, and suddenly like one of your eyes kind of rolls up in your head as blood starts to trail out of your nose. You're able to kind of catch yourself on a knee. But once you wipe the blood off, you feel fine, but but it becomes very apparent. You you should probably get back to the Platinum Hammer. Um, and also friend, uh, uh, awesome bra. Uh, I do have to one-up you very quickly. Don't, don't, don't take it personally. I have no interest here. He's going to turn over to Shionibus and grab his satchel. And in his hand, he's going to be, what have we learned about making shit deals? Sometimes you come out on top. And sometimes other people cheat for you. So he'll open up the bag and grab the jackal's pinky and hand it over. Now, Before I give this to you, there's two things. One, tell the gold-looking motherfucker to fuck himself. Two, Anubis informed me that I have to tell you very specifically, and I quote very dramatically, I am sorry that I was observant and not present. I have failed you, and these deals you have made are because I have not been here and I see my folly. Was the quote. Now take this and never do something that fucking stupid ever again. Tobias. Just take it. I don't want it. You cut off his finger? Uh, No, no, he gave it to me, you doofus. That's not much better. He handed it to me for you for this deal. You. This was not your deal to, to me. He handed it to me. Tobias? It wasn't my deal. He handed it to me. It's your god. Take it up with him. Is that why you went into the room with him? It was a sign. Did you go behind my court. back and fix this? Yes. So you could go behind my back and fix this? Yeah, now end up on that top. That is not your place. I'm not going to eat this jackal finger. Fucking take it. Uh, 
that was not and i don't place. care your problem solved and that's all i give a shit about We'll discuss this later when obviously not I everyone's watching. Could care less. Uh, I want to get back to the Platinum Hammer now. And now that you will be able to see our way there, uh, perhaps we can get more things. At this point, he will toss it. She'll catch it. Let's go. And she's going to start walking. He'll finger guns awesome raw blood dripping out of his nose <laughs> something and don't worry about it yeah it's fine uh and that is where we're gonna end today's episode of edge of legend awesome raw officially the champion of raw again glory to the sun uh and alive uh, and the Red Waste has another day of di uh, victory and peace as Ravon is uh, shooed away. Um, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in. Let's say our goodbyes uh, with love and respect to Sam. I hope you're, uh, hope you're having a good night, and we will see you next week. Everyone else, let us say our goodbyes, starting with Mr. Michael Powell. Mr. Michael Powell, please tell them who you are and where they can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Michael, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry. I just want to say during that entire exchange, Rufa, Itchy's in the background, is passing back and forth a, like a small bag of popcorn. Just <laughs> nom, 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 nom. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, as always, I am Michael Powell, and you can find me all over the internet on my social medias, which is usually at Mr. Kapow. That's M-R-K-A-P-A-O. Or my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Michael Powell does stuff because I do a lot of stuff like my YouTube channel, Fantastic Tales of Adventure. And um, let's see, this upcoming week, what's on my schedule is Thursday, which is tomorrow. Um, first is uh, Toyzilla Live on Toyzilla Network at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where we talk about toys and toy news. And right after that, at 7 p.m., I'm going to be on Life Action Roleplay or Fae uh, Boardroom, where I'm playing a sentient shark ham puppet that needs to tell really bad jokes to stay alive. And That's then amazing. on and then on uh, Friday, I'm on the Jahananan channel where we're gonna be playing at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, Modern Age TTRPG, where it's a game where it's kind of like Mighty Max meets Sliders meets Stargate SG-1. And yeah, that's all. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, yeah, I think we're going to be rating off this, so let us know uh, who to rate in the secret chat. Uh, that being said, let's go to Sydney. Sydney, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Hello, my name is Sydney Rubino. You can find me all over the internet at Sydney Rubino. That is Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Um, uh, what am I doing? On Saturday nights, I have another stream. It's in D D 5e Homebrew, which is uh, like post nuclear gay chaotic mess, which is very fun. Um, that streams on the exquisite Corpse Presents TTRPG channel. It's a new channel, so if you want to be nice and supportive for some newbies and some, like, queer folks, please come over there and follow us and support us on Saturday night starting at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And that's all I got for right now. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, well, a uh, big round of applause and keeping that applause going for Kylie. Kylie, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. I'm Kylie, or I go by Kai. It really doesn't matter at this point. You can find me at Kai's Wonderful Life all over the internet, uh, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Uh, when I'm not here, I am over on Chromatic Dice here on Twitch at Fridays, 5.30 Pacific Standard Time, uh, where we are playing a homebrew D&D game where we just wrapped up season one. Uh, you can catch all those on YouTube if you need to catch up, because we started in season two and it's just as wild. Uh, so definitely come check it out. Also, you can win free dice if you hang out and chat long enough. And who doesn't want to win free dice? Uh, when I'm not there, I am also playing here on Twitch another D&D 5e game over at Asgard's D&D Adventures on Sundays, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, where I'm playing a sassy little gunslinger who just turned her whole party back into villains. Huh. So that's fun. We are really getting back into being antiheroes, where was where we started. So it's a lot of fun. Come check it out. All right. Well, last and certainly not least, Tobias, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on this sweet, sweet internet. 
Hi there, I'm Tobias McCurry. All of my socials are going to be like at Tobias McCurry or springheeledstudios.com. Um, I will be trekking not this weekend, but next weekend all the way over to Atlanta from I am currently in Seattle uh, for the Atlanta Steampunk Exposition uh, as a guest there. Uh, so if you're in that area for any reason, come high five me or something or keep social distance. I don't that That's probably better. Um, buy me a drink from six feet away. That's, I think that's what I want to say. Uh, next, I have yet to decide dates, but if you stock my social media, I am currently looking at streaming a few video games on my channel here on Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash Springhield Studios. Um, I believe it's the next one, PJ. Thank you. Um, and we can say that if you would like. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, sure. Um, so it is looking like uh, next weekend, sorry, next week's game uh, here for Edge of Legend will likely be my last with the party, as Tobias will hopefully be either dying or going home. Um, take your pick. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, so uh, next week we're going to be uh, having one more awesome episode with Tobias as Tobias. Uh, so if you want to see the last episode of Tobias, please turn in, tune in next week. Uh, and that'll be the last week. My name is PJ McGaw. You can find me all over the internet at PJ.McGaw. When I'm not here with these amazing legends, you can find me here on our channel Monday nights as we have a brand new show, Wayward Arcadium. The first episode happened a few days ago. It was an awesome episode. Uh, the podcast of that is going to be launching pretty soon. Everywhere Goblets and Gaze does their podcast reveals. And I believe we're going to be getting that video on our YouTube, Nat 20 Prods, I believe Friday this weekend. So uh, we'll have all this information, all that up there for you then. Hope you really like the new show. Hope you love this show. And uh, let's see, there's a strong possibility that tomorrow night I'll be doing the D&D 5e campaign again with a uh, blue collar DM. But there's been a horrible snowstorm in the East Coast. So if that doesn't happen, we'll, we'll give you updates either way. Uh, and so then... Thank you so much for tuning in. I can't wait to give you more awesome announcements. And oh, yes, Tobias. Oh, I just love Joe. Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we cannot close the show without thanking RTD Joe. Thank you, Joe, so much for being an amazing TD. Uh, couldn't have a show without you, literally. And we thank you for all your awesome hard work. Uh, so, yeah, so we'll see you here, same that time, same that channel. And uh, it's official. The writing for Night Witches 2 has started. So in March, about a month from now, we'll see you in New Jack City for the Night Witches Take Flight. And let's get raiding before I forget. Wow. We're raiding, I believe, Hero Zone, right? Yes, we are going to be raiding Hero Zone. I don't know what they're doing on Hero They're Zone. doing some uh, miniature painting, and they're celebrating... Uh, an anniversary so oh it's Ooh. also a store in ohio it's a game store in ohio yeah. awesome so if yeah. you're out in the midwest in ohio these are your boys yeah. slash girls give them support all right with that being said we're gonna be raiding in three two one